forever. Dog. All for one and revenge for all. This week on the podcast, Lois Duncan's Daughters of Eve. Teen Creeps, the podcast that discusses YA Pulp Fiction. I'm one of your hosts, Lindsay Katai. I'm another one of your hosts, Kelly Nugent. And since we're doing a low dunk book, uh, clever, creepy ears should know yes. who our guest is. If you're a fan of the podcast and you don't know who's going to be on this episode, I mean, apart from the fact that you clicked on the podcast file sure. to play it. And it does have his name and in the title. And it does have his name in the oh, title. And I just said his, so and, you know he identifies um, as it. He... Already, I'm spilling yeah. beans left oh and right God. here. Okay. Uh, you should know. Just say his name. Comedian, just podcaster. Say his name. <laughs> <laughs> you might know him from Nintendo Cartridge Society or Same Day Shipping. Patrick Ellers is here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. so welcome. That was Thank such you. a great buildup. Thank you. Thank I mean, you. it was it was chill. Uh huh. It was a super chill buildup. It, it was, was. It was both chill and panicked. Mm. What, why was it panicked? Because it's the intro. we fucked it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> the intro. We always get nervous during the intro. Yeah. It is a weird even thing to do. Even though we know you and know your credits. We know you deeply. Every time. Even though we know you on like a molecular level. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. Every time I come in, you get We take a, a samp. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> take a samp. We and put they, it we in our We go to the files. microscopes. Yeah. We'll flip yep. them around. Yeah. We put it away. And we're, every time we're different. like, I'm not surprised. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is stuff we already know. Yes. We know all these molecules. We have decoded your... Your DNA here. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need 23 and me. You guys no, did it for yeah. me. It's mm-hmm. called uh, Kelly K. Ty and me. And uh, if you tune in at the end of the podcast, we're going to tell you all about uh, Patrick's ancestry. That's right. Uh, you know what? Spoiler pretty much white. Pretty much white. Almost exclusively Almost German. Almost exclusively German. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of German. Very in German. My, my grandmother was a quarter Irish, and everything else is German as far as I know. Mm. Which. Leads to a family tree that I don't really want to investigate. <laughs> like I don't, why? Yeah. I don't really want to know more about no, it. That's why. Okay. I mean, like why? historically, I would not know any reason. Like why. I just like, can't. For like the Germans, to put it though? into context, <laughs> I'm just like I'm not sure what you might be nervous is there. Here's the thing: I do know that for a spell, my grandfather lived in Mexico and okay. did something with weapons. Sure. sure. Okay. But okay. I don't know sure. what exactly. And yeah. You know that he changed his name, but you don't know why. That's right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And there were a bunch of tattoos that he wouldn't let us see. Okay. Oh. That mm-hmm. part's a lie. Wait, not... what did you call your grandpa? Uh, grandpa. Faja. Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Elmer. <laughs> Oh, right. His name is Elmer. His name is Elmer. Was Elmer. Yes. Mm, it is. He, okay. Is, is, is mm. even when he's passed. I'm so glad you uh, you came in here today because we have a surprise for you. What? <laughs> we have a hologram of your grandpa. Oh, that's not as good. <laughs> and he's performing with Jay-Z. That's Coach better. Elmer. Yeah. Um, so we brought you back to talk about another low dunk book, mm-hmm. Daughters of Eve. This is the one that so many of you have requested that we cover. And I know why oh, now. Yes, I know why now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And also the the central question that all of you seem to have, which I also have, is, is this book feminist or not? I it's am hard to undecided. say. I don't know. <laughs> yes? I, I mean, it, does this book make a clear statement about anything like it, it's no. it's going yes. along. A lot of stuff starts to happen, yeah. and then it's just like three years later, and for like that was yeah. Shocking. Oh my Abrupt. god! When we got the like post credits, where are they now? Yeah. I was like, what? what? Yeah. We're done. I know. <laughs> and then like very little information was given. Like not enough information was given about them to justify. Doing a where are they now? Yes, because there's so many of them. There's ten of them. And it, doing like yeah, a VH1 so behind the music. Where are they now? I mean, the the thing that it does do is it shows that, and there are so many character names in this. I'm never going to remember I who anyone is. Had to just about every time one of the like not as main character mm-hmm. name came came up. Like any time it was talking about Paula. Or Holly. Or Kelly. Yeah. Or Holly. I yeah. was like, who? Those yeah. were definitely the three that kind of 
were just filler. I could only remember, obviously, Christy because we started with her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jane Laura because that's and so Jane. sad. Yes, and yeah. Jane because so sad. Jane's so sad. J- <laughs> Laura's so <laughs> What's sad. What's her last name? Yeah, Laura. Jane's so oh. sad Re- Reardon. Reardon. Yeah. Oh, Jane's so sad and Reardon. Uh, Laura so sad Snow. Yes, yeah. and uh, Christy Ship Brothers. Whatever oh, the fuck, God. whatever their last name is. So what I is am there? Grange. Uh, gr- yeah, gr- Grange. Grange is correct because Peter Grange is her brother. Yes. So, um, did you guys read the interview at the end? Yes. Um, did I re- your book have it? I am My book does. Dying have it. to know yeah. what it was. Yeah, I should have looked into this before. Once again, we not went, enough research. When is you done. say what it was. The what, difference. What the, uh, oh, the difference yeah. between yeah. the original version because, and this. Yeah. So, the, so basically, okay. Do you want to read the back? Of the yeah. Book let's do a general do thing. Um, sisters in loyalty, love and service or else. The girls at Modesta High School feel like they're stuck in some anti-feminist time warp. They're faced with sexism at every turn and they've had enough. Sponsored by their new art teacher, Ms. Stark. They band together to form Daughters of Eve. It's more than a school club. It's a secret society. A sisterhood. At first, it seems like they're actually changing the way guys at school treat them. But when Ms. Stark urges them to take more vindictive action, things take a violent turn. Blinded by their oath of loyalty, the Daughters of Eve become instruments of vengeance. Can one of them break the spell before real tragedy strikes? No. Uh, no. <laughs> what, but, that was but what does that even mean, though? Not the totally true. Real tragedy. Because like sometimes they are doing things, and I'm like, yeah, this is... Like, yeah, I'm, the, I'm glad the thing this is with happening. Peter, the thing with Peter, I was like fine with except for maybe the carving of the word slut on the back of his head was a little little, intense i thought i was like fuck yeah 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 i I wouldn't say i thought he deserved it i think if they were doing it to niles i'd be like 100 percent fucking go there i was pissed that niles was not involved in the niles to the ends of the earth but also fuck peter because he is niles's fucking role model yeah in this like peter that's like niles is that way partially because peter is a fucking shit yeah peter's a piece of shit so so these girls um uh basically are in this sorority at school uh uh Ms. Stark, Irene Stark. She's from another. Um, she came from Chicago, and she came to this small, from the big city. I know from the <laughs> from Chi Town. Um, she comes in, and she's like, "This place is backwards." Because, as um, Lois Duncan mm-hmm. said in the interview, she had to have it be kind of like it was a backwards town because it would be pretty. I mean, some of the blatant stuff they're saying it just seems a little bit like second wave feminism. Yeah, for sure. Um, so she was like, okay, I had to make it so that it was like, it was this weird time warp town. Whereas like when it was originally written in the seventies, it was just like the world. In 1979. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I think it was such a mistake to try to update. They should have just left it, left it, let it it be in the seventies. And so I was just ignored. I'm like, yeah, me too. Just Just because you change things to like cell phone and Google. I'm not like, I know when this was always do that. Right. Like anytime she's like, oh yeah. And they couldn't use their cell phones because of a thing. You're just like, okay, they don't have cell phones. There was, yeah. And all, but there was one time where I did like the cell phone thing and it was when poor Laura, it just, I just felt like this revealed something Mm. about Peter and how terrible he is. Poor Laura is trying to call Peter and she's like, oh, he never gave her his cell phone number. He only gave her the landline. And I was like, damn, that is shitty. It's shitty, but it it implies that she does have the home phone number and he's got like, you know, he's got so many other members of the family that are like plugged into the high school. Also, the sister updates are so sporadic. They are. Like, yeah, it's real strange. Be consistent. You can't just, you can't reference cell phones and be like, why didn't you just call my cell phone? Just pretend cell phones aren't there or have characters, yes, in fact, call on a cell phone or text because it's 2011. Right. Yeah. And it's, I mean, there are also times where like the excuses don't make any sense where it's like, oh yeah, the father was so upset that he forgot her cell phone number. Exactly. Yeah. And she's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Either make it so it wasn't a neighbor and he did call you. Right. Yeah. Or there's no such thing. Yeah. Right. There's just no such thing as cell there's phones. There's no such and thing. It makes, the, it makes the whole book much easier. So there's no point. I I have to imagine it's just because the publisher was like, we want we think these will sell better if you like update it for the modern generation. Because that whole interview at the end makes it very clear that like 
she was being pushed yeah. to yeah. make things well, a little more extreme. And she says that like this is this was the hardest of her books to adapt for now. Yeah. Right? I also kind of want to see that first draft that was a charismatic male uh, fundamentalist preacher. Yes. What? Instead of Irene Stark. And, and it would have been like Christian fundamentalist. Whoa. Like cult, cult type stuff. I think it is very telling that it started out that way. It's like, oh, that's how you got to Irene Stark. It's because you started with a guy who isn't. Right. Liberal. You started mm-hmm. with a guy you started who with, is yes, someone like who's militantly, looking to control yeah, mm-hmm. young girls. You started like from a completely different mindset. You can't just like slap a girl's name on it and call her a feminist. And, yeah. And have it be the same. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also kind of why like throughout it, this, the stuff with Irene Stark, like a lot of times like her motivations didn't. It wasn't enough, enough for me. No. It, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't read as real mm-hmm. to me. Like it seems like Lodunk wrote a feminist villain or like an anti feminist villain. Mm-hmm. Or like a villain to prove the points of anti feminists yeah, yeah. and and then just like went nuts with it. She That's also my I think gripe is um that she didn't fully commit to what she thought of Irene. She, she also said commit. she tried to do a gray line. Yeah, but it it was like not a real gray line. Yeah. It was mm. more like trying to have her cake and eat it too, where it's like, I couldn't tell. It's like, did she make Irene this way because she, low dunk, does feel this way about feminists? Or did she write it that way because she was trying to walk a line? And it just, it feels like the first and not the the second i also think maybe there is like a way she could have done it where because it seemed like there were just some like some connections missing um i think that you can have this character Mm -hmm. and still have this be a feminist book if you're like this is what happens to us when you do this to us when we have this uh institutionalized um sexism and you just keep like pushing us down and pushing us down the only thing we can do is freak out and like become a right. villain it's, it's the only way that we can that our voices can be heard at all right and like you make us this way mm-hmm. like you make us you either make us into these like uh pliant little sex dolls um uh sweet mothers or like evil violent harpies and like you put us there and then you hate us for that i think that maybe but i mean the, that's, this that's is not, not in the book in i think yeah. it doesn't even need to be that extreme but like the circuit i think that irene needed to have been changed under laura's experience so like Which if one is, oh laura yeah mm-hmm. if, i think if that if thing had happened her. to irene oh or if Oh, that's a great or point. Or if Irene like really knew absolutely everything about what happened to Laura and if what happened to Laura was a little bit worse mm-hmm. and maybe reminded her of an experience she had or she had been the victim of sexual abuse at some point in her life and um, and then kind of snapped, mm-hmm. that would be one thing. For But it didn't feel like Irene ever... Yeah, she never snapped. Point. She was just, just always seemed, sort of yeah, extreme. Yeah, like throughout. She was always just sort of like sullen and resentful and extreme and angry. And, and she also like weirdly doesn't have like she's not really listening to the rest of the daughters of Eve. Like when yeah. Anne goes to her and is like, "I'm trying to figure out what to do about. I'm pregnant. I'm trying to figure out what to do." She's just like, get an abortion. You should get an abortion. Why aren't you getting an abortion? Yeah. Get the abortion. It's like, she why aren't you having it her. now? Yeah. Have it now. Have it in front of me on this table now. I'll do it. I'll, I'll do, do it right now. Let's do it. I'm going to give you an abortion. I know Let's because I, I work with sculptures. And so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, she. Yeah. And I think also just kind of jumping off of your point, Lindsay, I, I, I agree. I think that. If we had seen the ramifications and if we had seen the characters like react more to what happened to Laura, mm-hmm. she was sexually assaulted. And, and nobody I feel like knows no one that. Knows yeah. No one knows. Except no one ever for, finds out. Um, I think Irene knows. Or there's, I don't there's, think she even knows. There's one sentence at the end of the book where someone says something about 
oh, well, and you know, Niles like shouldn't have tried to swoop in like that. Like that was messed up. Yeah, but that's Niles. And they move on. I remember seeing that and being oh. like, oh, so they do know? Because oh, the whole time I was like, oh, no one knows about Niles. No one knows. And then there's that one line. Peter and I th- knew. No, it wasn't Peter. Really? Yeah, Peter it, does Peter know. Peter knows. I mean, Peter knows. He, he's I not going to tell anyone. Yeah, yeah, it was one of yeah. the girls. They're talking about it. And they say some line about mm. Niles like being, I, I don't remember what exactly, but they mention it, it's it's implied that they know at least that mm-hmm. Niles like tried something Showed with her. Up. Yeah, but I mean, I think, and I, I think the book does it too, that they're sort of like glossing over the sexual violence like angle of it. Yeah. Right? That they're just like, oh, he swooped in and like tried to get sloppy seconds. Yes. And it's like, it's no, like, that's, no. he tried to fucking rape he her. He attacked yeah. her. Yeah, and she fucking bit his tongue and then he got pissed off and left. Right. Like if she hadn't done that, he hundred percent would have raped her. Oh yeah, yeah. totally. Um, I I think what it is is with a with a story and character like this, I don't know if there is a gray area. I think there is making the villain sympathetic. Mm-hmm. Sure. I don't think there's a gray area about the events. Obviously, the events that begin to snowball are not right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's no gray area between. It being okay to fucking smash up a school and smear pig feces right. everywhere mm-hmm. or hack up a desk. I'm sort of in support of attacking Peter, but I'm kind of I, on the I'm also in support of attacking yeah, Peter. I'm, I'm in support um, of it too. I mean, I, I, to rec- point, I recognize that it's extreme, yeah, but I'm like, but it was yes, very satisfying. Yes. <laughs> also, like, so at first, but like, make her sympathetic. That's yeah. the way that you mm-hmm. handled that. Also, yeah. And I think, and maybe is this us just being shitty? Like, is she a sympathetic character? Is she a sympathetic villain and we just don't see it because she's a woman? I actually, I do see her as a sympathetic character. I just don't see her experiences having been enough. Yeah. Or at least having her mental state described a little more because as it is, yeah. it's so very surfacey. And we also but never I see her sympathize. I, because what's happening is I think the three of us probably all had this experience, or at least yeah. I did, where it's like we're having to fill in the blanks for low dunk. Yeah, because yeah, she didn't sure. give us enough info about Irene. I'm like, okay, well, like, oh, but it's weird. I'm she sympathizing seems to be... with her because I imagine she's kind of unstable and cracked. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, and like the sympathetic like adult character in a low dunk is like like that's a character we want to like hang on to and be like, okay, yeah. that's that's like an anchor. Yeah. Um, but I, she also like is cagey about her own backstory. Like she tells her own experience yeah. as something that happened to her friend at first. Yeah. Yeah. And so like I. I don't think Lodunk wants us to really be that close to Irene. Like, I think yeah, we're meant yeah. to be kept at arm's length throughout. Which I think is a mistake if you're mm-hmm. writing an incre- incredibly charismatic leader <laughs> right. of a emerging cult. Also, that's the thing. Like, she's supposed to be this very charismatic leader, but I didn't really see it in... Like, she listens to the girls. She I does- thought her being a good manipulator. Totally. Yes. Not a good... Not charismatic. Yeah. She, like, was pretty devoid of personality. Yeah, and she she just wasn't cult leader enough no. for me. I don't know. I mean, she's cert- it's like, just because she's preaching about feminism and the state that their mother's lives are in and her, quote-unquote, friend's experience. It's like, <laughs> oh, man, this is my friend. We're like, give it up, Irene. You don't have any friends. <laughs> she, yeah. also, she also, she also, we are your friends, and that's sad. I know. She we're... lets the illusion go right away, too. Like, I know. as soon as totally. someone is like, that's you, right? She's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's like, yeah, that was me. <laughs> um, yeah. I sort of lost track, but yeah, she, oh, nice. it needed to be that. I think we're just saying, like, yeah, she's not charismatic. No, she's not. It. And it's hard because I want her to be charismatic. Yes. I want. I want the crusade that she goes on to be this righteous thing that I'm on board with every single step of. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I want to feel like I am in the group. Yes. And agree, mm-hmm. but know it's getting out of control at the same time. But you don't want to leave. But I yeah. don't want to leave uh, sh- because it feels right. It's it's kind of it's, it's like kind of fight clubby. Yeah. Mm. And it's also the flip side of Carrie. Mm, like okay. what if instead of Carrie having supernatural powers and burning down the school instead she, she tried to kill herself and all of her friends yeah. looked to blow up the school for her yeah yeah which is a cool idea except like no it's just a little too far quite. 
So, okay, let's go down and try and remember as much as we can about each of these characters. Ooh, oh, God. A challenge. Should we start? Should we use the. Uh, can I even the remember? Oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's say oh, where they call. ended up and then let's try and remember who they were and what their story was. <clears throat> Erica Schneider. Okay. Okay. Say, say where um, she ended up. Okay. Erica Schneider is a first semester senior at the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor, working towards a bachelor's of science degree in biochemistry. Here, I'm, I'm going <gasps> to oh, I'm going to say her. instead because I feel like that's a cheat. That's yeah, too helpful. It's too much. Instead, you say the name. We'll say what we think her story was, and then you read. How about you tell me how many up. words you need <laughs> from? <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Why don't we? Why don't we? Um, uh-huh, uh-huh. Why don't we try and remember where they end up? Too. Oh, that too. <laughs> I will be, be very bad. At that. <laughs> so she's the okay. one with the mice, okay. right? Yeah, she's the one she's with the rat rats. Girl. Yeah, she has been. She's like thinks she looks like a praying mantis or something. She thinks oh, yeah. she looks oh, yeah. like an insect because her glasses she's got, like, and her a nose, long nose or something. And, yeah. Um, I tell you what, and this, she dates this book is like Gore, A plus low Durham. dunk uh, character. Men are beautiful. Men are super <laughs> the men are so beautiful. beautiful. And the women are either. Uh, too fat, or yeah, or they look or, like bugs. Yeah, or yeah. they look like bugs. Or they're or Madison. One of them is gorgeous. Right. Yeah, one, Madison is the model. One of them always a model. Yes. Um. Right. So can okay. I, can we kind of talk about what happens with her? Because here was my thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did think that her experiment was a little fucked up. Totally, oh, so as she's up. describing it. So the experiment yeah. is to get rats addicted to alcohol. And then remove like, the alcohol from generations them. of yeah. Yeah. family is addicted to alcohol to prove that it's a genetic, a genetically inherited trait. Right, which is something that that's horrible. When like, she was describing that, mm-hmm. I was like, "You're a literal monster." No, and like we're supposed to be on her side at this point. Like this is the beginning at that when point, yeah, yeah, when everyone's yeah. like, "Wow, cool, what an amazing science project." And we're getting like a step by step description of like how she did it. Yeah, and it's here's, yeah. intricate. She like would make certain rats drink alcohol or make all of them drink alcohol whichever ones like the alcohol more she would breed them and then so it was like and then the ones that like didn't that only sometimes like alcohol she like got rid of and then the ones that didn't like alcohol she bred so then right. she had she a was group breeding very specifically a, a breed of alcoholic rats yeah yes. and then non-alcoholic rats and then she just kept doing <laughs> that like for many like this is years and then she named all of the rats um Ketai. <laughs> Every single one of the rats, like, alcoholic how and non-alcoholic. Is this human girl who is a descendant of these rats? How will she be affected? By it? <laughs> and then, what if, what if her mother's side of the family is also full of alcoholic rats? Let's see what happens. Let's see what's inherited. <laughs> it, so, what she's explaining, it and her friends like, "Wow, Erica, that's so cool." And I was like. This is a fucked up that experiment. That is so mm-hmm. mean. Well, and also it's she's so, as, as she's I explaining hate it. Animal testing. Yeah, Me it's, too. It's rough. Uh, but then her friend is like, "Oh, but isn't aren't you proving something that we already know?" And then Erica explains why it's proving something more, but I don't remember what that explanation is. Oh, oh I'll try, and let uh, me try to remember because I felt the same way. I was like, "Yeah, we we know we it's know, genetic. We yeah, know that. I think it's something to do with dry." Drunks. Oh, that like she's if, trying, if they've oh, never had it, they've never had weird. it. That might be she's right. like trying to disprove. Yeah, she's like debunking alcoholics the teachers. anonymous. Yeah, she's saying you don't have to go cold turkey, or that if you do, you're going to relapse. Yeah. She, something about relapse. She was like, relapse is always going to happen. Mm-hmm. Whereas you, no you, matter if what, you just give them alcohol sometimes. Then they're okay. No, if they ever touch alcohol, then they become alcoholics again. So she's saying like you shouldn't even bother. Like you, no matter what, they're always going to relapse. Yeah, it's it's non prescriptive. She doesn't oh, say yeah. here's here's how we should apply this yeah. to human beings. No, yeah. she's she's just like basically mm-hmm. she's like the rats like are going to relapse no matter what because they like no matter what they always choose. But I was like, also rats aren't human, so like. Also, like you're rats the can't ones find deciding Jesus. what's in their fucking cage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like some of those rats They're had not, like, only vodka. Bartender, pour me another round. <laughs> oh my god, I would love if there was a little rat bartender oh, in there. Oh, so, so cute! Such an amazing oh, rat. That's so cute. So yeah. So then her project gets thrown out because the uh, judges at the state level will throw out animal cruelty related fair. projects. Yeah, fair. which is fair. It's it, it historically has been the case. 
And, and then, so she doesn't get to go to the Science State Fair. I respected that she understood yes. and was like, I shouldn't have blithely assumed. Like, I was I was full of myself. I hubris. was being eager. Yes. yes. This was my hubris is yeah. to blame because right. I was so excited. And she said so that she didn't excited. touch base with her yeah. advisor. And she also said that because she admitted that, like, she was trying to show off and prove him wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and she even says, like, I, I, she's like, I'm not mad at the teacher. I'm not mad at uh, Gordon, Gordon, the guy that, like, did that shit experiment. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm just mad at myself. He made and, the uh, solar system. Yeah. <laughs> what? I like that Gordon was also like, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't shouldn't know. have done I just, that. It's fucking lame. It. I'd give you my spot if I could. Do you think he had Pluto in a planet in his, uh, as a planet well, in his solar what did he system. Do? He if had he a solar. He was ahead of his time. <laughs> okay, so I, I, and he should thought, have gone. <laughs> I thought this as well. I thought he changed his experiment. Yeah, because they said solar system. No, it's a, it's a solar system. System. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it was a solar panel, and the it, it was still it was the, something the one like it was if like you turn a light on when it gets to the other when something travels. Stick a hot dog in there to the other hot. side. It'll be hot because of the sun. <laughs> yeah. So he like, like basically okay, had like a, a Quiznos like <laughs> toaster like thing. He, he had like an easy bake oven. Yeah. Like, yeah, you and know like, what's crazy when it gets on the other side? The cheese is melted. Holy oh. shit! So did you know that like the sun is hot? <laughs> My hypothesis is correct. I also like that at the very beginning of the book when we first are in Erica's head, she's like, "Yeah, I've got this." The only one, the only other person in school who's like as smart as me is Gordon, and like. He does not try. And as yeah. soon as we meet Gordon, he is, he is not, not trying. trying. <laughs> nope. He did it like the day before and was like, I don't know. And he's like, I, I, like, I guess I'm I not did proud this. of this. I know exactly what I did. <laughs> and as soon as his project does get picked to go to state, he's like running to catch up with her to be like, yeah. hey, I thought your project was rad. Yeah. And, and he likes her and she likes him. Right. Also, yeah. And he's like, do you want to like go to like watch a movie or something? And I was like, yeah. oh, I like them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he wanted to see her rats. Yeah. yeah. He did. Also, I mean, someone should have. Hey. Someone should have yeah, stopped that girl. Someone should have stopped that girl. That's that so was some up. like Victor Frankenstein shit. She needed to like stop. Yeah, I don't know. If I'm her parents, I'm gonna be in there going, "Okay, but what are you doing with the <laughs> no, rats?" They can't deal with the rats. The rats They're are like, too Ugh. much for them. The it's mom so is too scared of the rats. That a girl is playing with rats. Yeah, they were. They were like, "Ew!" But why is it rats? <laughs> I mean, they probably, all, knowing just the setting of this book, that they would have been like, "Oh, a girl is playing with science." Yeah, <laughs> oh, science. Keep it in the science garage. All over her room. Oh my god, it was so funny when they're all talking and someone's like. Oh, they're trying to think about what the teachers teach at school. And they're like, well, all the teachers are girls. Well, except for the science teacher. Although I suppose science is considered a a masculine pursuit. (laughs) And they're like, but what about shop? What about shop class? (laughs) Surely shop class class is only for men. (laughs) Like, but how come no girls enroll? (laughs) I guess it's traditionally we're all interested in things and there's no reason or rhyme to <laughs> it's just that one is male and one is female. Did, did y'all have to do shop? Uh, we could have. Yeah, it was an elective. We okay. could choose between shop, home ec, um, ceramics, or art class. It was like one, like there were like eight different things you could do. Sure. So I did home ec one year and that was when I discovered I liked cooking. And then I did ceramics one year, which I really loved ceramics. I, I like ceramics a lot. Um, when I was in junior high school, we had to do like all of them. So we had oh. like a, a, a home ec class. We had a a shop class and all this stuff. But then by the time high school came along, like none of that was like presented. I, I know there was shop class because yeah. that's where my homeroom was. Yeah. Um, so I spent a lot of time in a shop classroom, but never, ever, ever like – use the jigsaw or anything. Oh, really? And I'm better for it, I think. Hey, everyone. Kelly here. Wanted to take a quick break from the show to talk to you about one of our sponsors, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a lovely meal kit delivery service that I am obsessed with. HelloFresh shops, plans, and delivers step-by-step recipes and pre-measured ingredients so you can cook, eat, and enjoy. Some of my favorite HelloFresh meals are the balsamic fig chicken and the sweet potato and black bean tacos with avocado crema and cilantro. Here's how it works. There are three plans to choose from, classic, veggie, and family. Forget about planning dinner, spending money on takeout at 10 p.m., or worrying about gathering ingredients week after week. All the ingredients come pre-measured in handy labeled meal kits, so you know which ingredients go with which recipe. Guys, 
It's super easy and you can make these delicious meals all by yourself. And everyone can enjoy these. Everyone from people who love cooking like me to people who are new at cooking. The recipes are simple and the instructions are outlined on pictured step-by-step cards. So it's super hard to screw it up. You spend less time meal planning and grocery shopping each week and you get that time back to do more of what you love. Most recipes only take 30 minutes. So you can listen to Teen Creeps while you prepare your meal. And HelloFresh is a subscription service, so your meals come to you week after week, just when you need them. So are you wondering about that very special offer that we got for you Teen Creeps listeners out there? Do not worry, we got you. For a total of $60 off, that comes to $20 off your first three boxes. Visit HelloFresh.com slash Teen 60 and enter promo code Teen 60. That's H-E-L-L-O-F-R-E-S-H dot com slash Teen 60 and enter promo code Teen 60 for $60 off HelloFresh. Before we get back to the show, you just wanted to talk to you about one more sponsor, Everlane. Would you buy a t-shirt for $50 if you knew it only cost $7 to make? No, and neither would we. But guess what? With Everlane, you never overpay for quality clothes. Everlane only makes premium essentials using the finest materials without traditional markups. And they tell you their real costs. So you know you're never overpaying. Because guess what? Everlane cares about you. They want you to know what you're paying for and why. They're radically transparent about every step in their process, from the materials they use to the ethical factories they work with. And because Everlane sells directly to you, their prices are 30 to 50% lower than traditional retailers. Everlane's clothes look better, cost less, and last longer. And that's true. Their clothes feel good. They look good. They feel like they're high quality and that they're going to last you a long time. Essentials like their Cotton Crew t-shirt are exactly what they should be. Simple, stylish, and made from quality materials. What are some of my favorite things from there? Um, I have a million favorite things from there. But if I have to pick three, I would say the square toe Chelsea boot in cedar. Guys, people, strangers, compliment me on these boots. They're really comfortable and they look amazing. The authentic stretch high-rise skinny ankle jean in washed black fits amazing, looks amazing, and goes with everything. And the cashmere shrunken sweatshirt in dark gray Donegal looks amazing, can be a little fancy, can be a little casual, and feels super soft and is really warm. I love, love, love Everlane stuff. Their timeless essentials are just what you're looking for. No frills, just quality. And now you can check out our personalized collection at everlane.com slash teen creeps. Plus, you'll get free shipping on your first order. That's everlane.com slash teen creeps. E-V-E-R-L-A-N-E dot com slash teen creeps. Um, okay, so then who's next after the girl, <laughs> Animal Cruelty Girl? We did a pretty good job with Erica. Yeah. I knew Erica. She's one of the main ones. Yeah. Although at times I would come across her name and go... <sighs> Right, but oh, right, rats. but Loda is, is pretty quick to be like, "Don't forget the rats," and you're like, yeah. "Oh, okay, oh, yeah, 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 I know who this she is." Does mm, do that. Science. All right, do you want first and last name? Yeah, just first name. Ann Witten. Okay, um, she's the pregnant one. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. pregnant. She's, she's an artist. Marry Dave, she's an mm-hmm. artist. Yeah. She also like okay for the longest time I was like, "How old is Dave?" Because mm-hmm. yeah, it is not super clear. No. They say it's been a, a few years since he was in high school, right? I he's have three years to older. He's three years he older. Is, okay. Oh, really? They yeah. do say that. We learned that. He's like, it's, oh, okay. it's been three years since I've been on a high school campus. Okay, I so was he's just like, like twenty-one. Please let him not be older than twenty-one. I was very worried. He's because... thirty-six. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, that's okay. No. <laughs> I was worried uh, for both of them uh, when yep. we first find out how they met, and um, the psychic one of the girls. Like sees the way she's describing him. She's like Tammy. Is that right? Yeah. Tammy's the psychic. Tammy's the psychic. So psychic Tammy. I often forgot is hanging out with Anne and another one, like Joe Ann or something. Kelly. It's Kelly. Someone. This is already more than I ever remember. (laughs) While I was reading the book, I'm like, oh, I'm not bad. And yet, when I would come across their names in the book, I was like, I don't know who this is. She's probably white. She's a girl. Yeah, I oh, would just definitely white. Oh, de- definitely <laughs> white. I just remember like like the first paragraph of every chapter because it's a, a chapter per girl. Mm-hmm. I would like be like, I don't know who this is. I'll figure it out eventually. She'll give some more details, exactly. and I'll be like, Oh, it's that girl. I would do the same thing. Mm-hmm. But so psychic Tammy and Anne, yes, and one of the other interchangeable Kelly. like third ones, Kelly, are sitting at this like. Uh, Basically, like malt shop type thing, and they see, they describe him as 
a sweaty so blonde man with, with like, whose like muscles were like, like ropey. Pushy, yeah, ropey like muscles. Big ropey muscles. Pushing against his <laughs> shirt. Like straining against his shirt. And eyes that are blue. Yeah. Like the sky on the clearest day in autumn. Yeah. Which we all know what color blue that is. We don't even have to. He's Paul Bettany. Say. Right? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> the Vision. Yeah, oh. he plays Vision. <laughs> that guy. Um, he's got some blue eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, what about this scene? So where- he's, they keep describing yeah. him as a man. Mm. And I thought he was not even just a man, a man, but also like kind of horrifying. <laughs> Yeah, no, I thought he was, I, I did not was enjoy, like I did not enjoy that he was like, you can live, first of all, it was, I thought he owned that farm for a while. So I was like, oh no, this is not yeah. good. But then it turns out he does own the farm because, because mom dies. Right. Well, his, yeah. his father had died previously, Already. right? Yeah. yeah. Before the well, because so he's, so, he's old. Right. so old. Yeah, because he's 55. He's 55. His parents were reaching 85. Right. Yeah. Um. Can't work a farm when you're 85. <laughs> no, it's too old. Um, and so, so then I was horrified when he's like, he proposes to her and he's like, will you marry me? And he's like, you know what? You could like live. I could make you a little studio in the farmhouse and you could hang out with my mom while I work the fields. I was like, and she's like, yay. I was like, what? Don't go to that house. I think that sounds amazing. Yeah. I didn't have a problem. I can't can't (laughs) wait. For my little studio in my little farmhouse. I mean, apart from hanging out with the mom, because I don't know what she's like. But I was like, that <laughs> she's sounds be so bad. charming. Here's the thing. Everyone dreams of a sojourn. Everyone mm-hmm. dreams oh, to like... I I just yearn for a sojourn. <laughs> <laughs> I do all the time. I'm like, I could run away and uh-huh. like be... In like a farmhouse somewhere for like two years. Yeah, I fantasize yeah, about great. not wanting the life that I have. Yeah, <laughs> and somehow like my creative FOMO would just like disappear. Into yes, the yeah, exactly. Um, or maybe I'm a novelist. Who knows? Well, that's why I was like, oh, she gets an artist studio. And yeah, she, and she gets she to practice work, her craft all and the she time. Can sell paintings online. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when he's like, you can do it on the Capital I Internet. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing that sucked was like he was like. He didn't even think that she'd have friends or anything like that. Like, he was like, you could just hang out with my mom all day. I was like, or she could, like, go out. I don't know. She doesn't have to be in the house with your mom all day. I didn't see that as, like, <sighs> a nefarious. Yeah, he didn't it say, like, I'm, I'm like, chaining I, you to I the don't... radiator in my mother's room. Yeah. <laughs> you have to keep her company all day. Like, I also wouldn't expect him to, like, list every single thing going on in her life. No, no. Also, okay, I don't know about you guys, but for some reason, I pictured him to be physically horrifying. Me too. Well, that's what I was saying. When she was describing him in that diner, I was like, who is this monster? Yeah, he was like the Hulk, but blonde. No, I I was into him. You liked him? Yeah, I liked him. I thought he was like sweet and unassuming and like everything. I was picturing like... As soon as I knew that person was Dave, I went back to my original idea of Dave, Mm. which was like a a kind of like undernourished, skinny, like strawberry blonde flop of hair. Yeah. like with, with like kind of like, freckles, like uh, yeah, freckles, and his like his nose is a bit big, mm-hmm. and he's like always wearing overalls. <laughs> yeah, and his overalls are cuffed, and his feet are bare. <laughs> That's Dave. He's so unassuming. <laughs> and one of the straps of the overalls is just always open. Yes, yep. but then when she's describing his like ropey muscles bursting from his shirt, I was like, ew, ew. what is this? Yeah, and then I was this picturing creature. He like seriously like I was picturing like like. A series of socks tied together, like stuffed with donuts. <laughs> Wait. Huh? Okay, sorry. It was just like a smiley um, face drawn on them. <laughs> could you elaborate? <laughs> okay, like tube socks. Okay. okay. Yes, I'm familiar. Stick with me. How many tube socks? Okay, I'm there. One, two, three, four, five. Five tube and socks? Then, and then uh-huh. like... Um, Is the head a dried apple? <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Ew. It's so small. Yes. Okay. So Ew, it's so small, but also yes. Okay, so it's like that, like um, like you know those like Entenmann's like powdered donuts. Sure, yeah. You Familiar. just like stuff like stuff those tube socks with more donuts than you think should be in there. Okay. That's the ropey muscles. And then oh, you okay. just tie it's like one tube sock per leg, torso, and then arms. What's the fifth? Torso, yeah, legs, and then, and then, and then arms. Oh, like yeah. the the length of his body. 
Is it? Yeah, that's one sock. <laughs> There's one sock full of yes. Benjamin's powdered donuts. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. As are his legs and arms. Okay. And then his head is a dried apple. It's a dried apple with googly eyes. <laughs> yeah, with okay. googly eyes and like a fucked up carved out mouth. <laughs> and then and like, so, like the donuts just keep falling out. <laughs> well, so they're tied. There's like there's powder. Yeah, there's powder everywhere. Oh no. Um, and then like his hair is like um a toilet brush on the top. Oh, I was gonna say uh like a corn on the cob oh like you just yes. chop the top off of that and like yeah. put it on top of the apple yeah you know those okay yeah. you know when you go to to albertson's during like fall time and they I have those do, tiny Kelly, i do you and i share the same albies i love that albertson's. i love that albies they have um this fun albies. festive thing um <laughs> that is like dried corns mm-hmm. and then it has like floofy like dried corn yes. hats yes. corn corn husk things yeah hair hair right. corn hair so corn hair corn becomes man hair. So that you just snip that off and you just hot glue gun that to the top of the apple. Yeah, corn and silk, corn silk, corn there silk hair. But it's dried. Do you see what I'm saying? Dried out. Corn so so silk it's hair. so it's hay like. It's still yeah. called corn silk. Though. It is. Nice. It would be, just because it's dried doesn't mean. Okay, well let's put some decorative do gourds in here, and then yeah. I think we're done. I think we got Peter. Yeah, and uh, then we can have people over for Thanksgiving with him as our centerpiece. I Aww. love it. Yeah, it's cute. Uh, so that 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 was Anne. We remembered Anne pretty well. Yeah. Um, well, because we... she had the whole pregnancy thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was like we well, all had opinions about that too. Well, and she al- she also had the uh, you know like scholarship to art school. That's right. That she ends up not taking. Yes. Which is a bummer. It is a bummer. I am so sorry to do right. this, but I did find the passage where she describes. Oh, please. Dave. Oh. No. Uh, so I, we apologize. have to go back. If it does not mention tube to socks, back. I'm going to freak out. <laughs> I'm going to be so embarrassed. <laughs> it says Entenmann's Donuts, right? <laughs> Approximately 400 Entenmann's Donuts. <laughs> it had happened over a year ago. It was the end of summer, and the man, the man, man. first off, man. had been. Red faced and sweating. Oh God! With his blonde hair plastered to his head, he was dressed in boots and overalls, and he was obviously a local farmer who'd come into town on an errand during lunch. He stood at the counter, swigging a coke in great thirsty gulps. Can I do the sound that I think his gulps sound like? Please do. Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think it is. Cool. He's choking on that coke. <laughs> yeah. It's like down his throat. Local yeah. armor. <laughs> <laughs> the muscles in his arms and shoulders standing out in corded lumps Ew. beneath the damp material of his cotton shirt. Corded. Why would anybody wear a long sleeved shirt on a day like this? Kelly wondered. To keep from getting burned when he's out in the fields, I guess. Anne glanced across at Tammy. Hey, what's with you? You're staring at that guy like you know him. I feel like I do, Tammy told her. He's going to be important, I think, to one of us. The mere idea of fastidious artistic Anne Whitten becoming involved with a farmer was ridiculous. (laughs) (laughs) I mean... Corded, corded lumps. lumps. That's the, the corded uh, lumps. Are that's, his hair. I must plastered against his head. Honestly, it I sounds think, hideous. Oh, I think without the corded lumps, which I must have, I must have just breezed past it. Like it must I have think been. You glazed over. I those. must have glazed over it. <laughs> um, but that does make him sound horrifying. Everything yeah. else, I'm like, I'm like, okay, I can still, I can see a normal, like charming low dunk boy in this. <laughs> well, I think it's just that you know how she feels about I men. Do. <laughs> that you are like, well, I'm sure he's still attractive. I'm, I'm sure I would love him. <laughs> Whereas Kelly and I are like, what the fuck are corded lumps? It just seemed so like mature. Like he just seemed like he had like a Sylvester Stallone body. Yeah. Like that like older guy yeah. on mm-hmm. like steroids body. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's Dave. That's Dave. And now you know why Kelly was saying tube socks. <laughs> Corded lumps. Donuts inside. Lumps. Corded lumps. Corded lumps. <clears throat> Tammy Carncross. Psychic. Oh, psychic. Right. The when it got to the part where her dad, it turned out, was the science teacher. And not even turned out. Clearly he, like he had been the whole it time. had been established. <laughs> right? But I was like, he is? Me too. 
I did not remember this Me information neither. at all. And then they kept bringing it up and I'd be like, oh, yeah, he is. Yeah. And then yeah. Tammy's got to go to bat for him in that meeting. And the whole yeah. thing is just like, oh, God. Uh, tense. Guys. Here's the thing. They hmm. did commit a lot of crimes. Yes. Yeah. These women. But I think we're just desensitized because we read so many books with a lot of like very horrible things happening that like none of it seemed that bad. And this is like like the updated version with like that made the things that they did more intense. I guess I'm just used to like I thought someone would have died. I mean, it's but all no yeah. one died. It's uh, well, she's you know, building in the, to that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I guess she was going to try and kill. Dies. Who was it? Oh, I think he dies. Who? 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 Mr. Reardon. Wait, what? Oh, that guy. Yeah. yeah. I was like, wait, did you not finish right. the book? I'm like, who died? <laughs> oh, yeah. OK. Yeah. That makes But I die. felt like she had nothing to do with that. Stark. Right. It's like in a way we're supposed to think like, oh, if she had never met Irene, she would never have ended up killing her dad. Honestly, though, but, like <sighs> self-defense. Yeah, yeah. That's one where it's like, yeah, he needs to be taken out. Because yeah. he no, was no, going no. to kill his I wife. Do not disagree. Right. Yeah. Which is the problem. <laughs> yeah. And that's the problem, I think, because like, we side with her. Dude fucked up his wife hard. Yeah. yeah. And then was like, You're the new wife. Bam. Hit her on the side of the face. Yeah. yeah. Like Ugh. immediately punch, make me dinner. That was yeah. crazy. And then also like dot dot dot, like imagine what your future's gonna be like. Yeah. yeah. And also your mom isn't even gonna stand up for herself oh, and God, side the mom with you. was so and it sad. Was like, oh, I know. I was like, yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, it's probably true. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, yeah, 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 go ahead, hit him. Yeah. Uh, Swing away. Yep. So, okay, psychic one. Yeah, to that, that's Tammy. Uh, next is Kelly Johnson. What the fuck happened I'm going to read the whole, her whole ending description here. Kelly Johnson is a junior pre-law at the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor. <laughs> Hers that was the nothing. worst where are they now? Yeah. She's the one whose parents are getting divorced and her dad met somebody else and oh, she's super bitter. She turns into a huge bitch. <laughs> it's yeah. really she funny. Turns, like, so she, mean. She, she, when she was she's like got the little sister, mean about right? her little sister. Yes. Yeah, Chris. And her sister saying like, it just gets kind of scary in the house with dad not here now. And she's like, fucking not my it. fucking problem. I know. And also the way, shuts her out. the way that like, she, oh, Chris, the way she installs the like deadbolt on her door to is like just to nail it like in the middle of the fucking door so her yeah, mom's she like doesn't oh know dear. What she's doing. Yeah. and she's like ha, ha, fuck you mom she's just like very she hormonal mm. yeah she goes from zero to 60 in the space of like two weeks also like all of her friends are like hey kelly what's up and she's like shut the fuck up i don't want to talk to you like she's mean to everyone yeah, right that's away true. immediately i forgot that about her okay yeah. i'm glad we remembered it together Hey guys, we wanted to take a quick break from the show to talk to you about one of our sponsors, Zola. Zola is the wedding company that'll do anything for love, is reinventing the wedding planning and registry experience to make the happiest moment in couples' lives even happier. From engagement to wedding to decorating your first home, Zola is there, combining compassionate customer service with modern tools and technology, all in the service of love. Guys, planning a wedding is stressful. I have been there. I am there right now. It's not... It's fun. But it's also full of like a million things that you have to do. And the to-do list is really hard to keep together if you're doing it by yourself. Zola is the easiest way to plan your wedding and register. There are over 5,000 couples who've used Zola. Join them. Zola takes the stress out of wedding planning with free wedding websites, your dream wedding registry, affordable save the dates and invitations, and easy to use planning tools. I love that all of this stuff is online and in one place. It's really hard to keep track of all this stuff believe me, and I am an organization queen. And yet, with this planning for the wedding, it's been very, like, how do I keep all this stuff together? Well, Zola has got you. You start with a free wedding website. It's very easy. It just takes minutes to set up. There are over 100 beautiful wedding website designs to choose from that fit any couple's style and every type of wedding. Literally, if you are like fancy princess wedding, or if you are like um, crazed witch in the woods wedding, honestly. Any of those things uh, from either spectrum, you can guess which sign I am, they have a style for you. You can put your Zola registry on your wedding website so guests can get all the details they need about the gifts that you're going to get. And they can buy your wedding gift in one convenient and beautiful place. 
Then you can build your dream registry at Zola. They have the widest selection of gifts at all different price points. There's something for every guest to give. Guests love the free shipping and returns, price matching, and more. And there's over 500 top brands from OXO and Cuisinart to Sonos and Airbnb. You can also create funds for your honeymoon, future home, new puppy, anything you want. Plus, register for gift cards to your favorite brands like Delta, Southwest, Hulu, Home Depot, more. And there's the best completion discount. 20% off remaining gifts on your registry starting right after your big day. So let's get you guys on this Zola train. To start your free wedding website and also get $50 off your registry on Zola, go to Zola.com slash teen creeps. That's Z O L A dot com slash teen creeps. And that gets you starting your free wedding website and you get $50 off your registry on Zola. That's Zola.com slash teen creeps. <coughs> Hey guys, before we get back to the show, we wanted to talk to you about one more of our sponsors, Curology. Look, we all suffer from skin issues. Um, Some stuff that uh, really irks me is, um, you know, you get those little like hormonal pimples. You get, um, I used to have really bad cystic acne. That also happening at the same time as wrinkles and skin that's not as tight as it used to be. All of those things are very annoying and very upsetting to deal with. But don't worry, Curology has got you. 62% of women think it's very important to use skincare tailored to their unique needs. But drugstore acne care is one size fits all. So of course, all of that crap that I was buying just at the drugstore wasn't working. Curology is personalized acne care, customized to you and your skin's unique needs and mixed by an expert just for you. Curology is a one-step skincare routine completely customized to you. Without scheduling an appointment, paying a copay, or even leaving your home, you can connect with an online dermatology provider who will design a custom prescription acne formula to be sent right to your door. All you have to do is go to Curology.com, answer some questions about your skin, snap a few quick selfies. I know that part is not fun. It is makeup-free, extremely close selfies. Um, you will not feel great doing that. However, sometimes you got to have a little pain to get a little progress. Is that is that a phrase? Whatever. And then Curology's expert dermatology providers create a skincare solution just for you. It even comes to you with your name on the bottle. There's no gimmick, no complicated routine, and 88% of Curology users see results. Guess what? I saw results. I'm so happy. And it's a very, it's crazy how simplicity makes it better. Not a million different creams and salves to like rub all over my face. It's just this one very simple little bottle from Curology that's tailored to me and my skin. So all you got to do is go to Curology.com slash teen creeps to get your first month free plus a free gift. Just pay $4.95 for shipping and handling. That's Curology.com slash teen creeps for your first month free plus a free gift. C-U-R-O-L-O-G-Y dot com slash teen creeps. That's Curology dot com slash teen creeps. And now back to the show. Here's here's the next one. This is going to be hard. Holly Underwood. I never fucking remembered what Holly's whole deal was. Holly has a car. Holly's the one with the car. That's Holly so funny to... because her paragraph here is Holly Underwood was killed in an automobile accident oh the summer following her high school graduation. Oh, she was, I remember that now. Yeah, she oh. was returning from a party celebrating her scholarship to the New England Conservatory in Boston. That's fucking Wait, mean, Logan. That's mean. Yeah, it's mean. That's Wait, mean. what was her deal? Wait, what, I, she was she the... the only thing I remember about her is that she was the one able to borrow her parents' car or something. Is she the daughter of the pianist? Oh, yes, because she did the Music conservan- Conservancy. I, I, that's, I mean, because it says yeah. New England Conservatory in Boston. Yeah, oh. Holly's mother was the pianist, and then she And was... her father is like, why do you need to practice? You're always banging on the piano. Yeah, and she was always oh, really defensive oh, oh, about oh. her family. She was yeah. like, oh, it's not bad here because my mom has a job. She teaches piano. And yeah, she... my dad lets her. My dad lets yeah. her. Yeah, okay. But yeah. after... After meeting her in her house, after being in her head at her house for a bit, I f- totally forgot after that. Every time Holly came up, I was like, who? Yeah. yeah. Who, who, Holly? <laughs> who you? Uh, Paula Brummel. Fuck. I don't. Paula, I never knew what one Paula's of those. deal was either. Paula, 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 Paula. Paula gets especially 
Um, I think it's like her and Kelly are the hardest. They turn the hardest. Yes. Sure. Paula, and so she's just like a like, she's a, like a, a flunky for Paula's, Irene. Paula, I mean, Paula's just Paula, you know? <laughs> what can I say like, other than Paula? To, you know, she's just so much yeah, herself. Don't try to pin her down. I mean, yeah, it's, I have, she's I a mean, multifaceted you woman. You know Paula. You know how she can get... <laughs> Madison Ellis. Oh, do you want to know what Paula, what happened? Oh, to yeah, Paula? what happened to Paula? I don't know a fucking thing. <laughs> It'll help us. <laughs> I'm just going to breeze past it. <laughs> Paula Brummel is a saleswoman for JCPenney in Adrian, Michigan. That doesn't help at all. No. Paula? Does, so is it her mom who works at JCPenney or is that Christy's mom? Christy's mom cuts hair. So Paula's mom works at JCPenney part time. Sure. Because I know JCPenney came up. Mm. Yeah, I remember that. Or. Or she just like throws that out there when they're talking. I don't it remember. It comes up it as like right. a possible career. And is like a sad possible yeah, career. Yeah, they're like, what are you going to work at JCPenney? It's like, oh, I guess she did. <laughs> she uh, did. That's what happened to her. Next, Madison Ellis. Model. Hot. Model. Hot. Fucking Hot. hero of the book. Yeah, hero uh-huh. of the book. Hot hero of the book. Leggy. Leggy. Mm-hmm. Blonde. Self-assured. Mm-hmm. Kicks Peter to the fucking curb right when he needs to be kicked yeah. to the mm-hmm. curb. And kind of kicks, kicks him, him to the curb again, twice. Right, yeah. twice. She should. She's great. I She's fucking great. loved Madison. I loved Madison. And she was also first to, when they find out about Laura, first to be like, let's burn him to the fucking ground. Yep. Yeah. I am. Le- I want a revenge plot on Laura's behalf immediately, that little turd. Yeah. yeah. Which is like the most exciting and like... Yeah, like that part of the book is so when we're with Peter for the first time, like when we're in his head and like he's going to this fucking thing. And yeah. You're like, you son of a bitch. You like don't you know what's coming. Shit. I love yeah. this. I love I don't being with you. I care that I'm yes. finding out anything about you right now. It yep. doesn't matter what you're telling me. I cannot wait to see what happens to you. I did think he was going to die, though. I uh, was kind of I hoping. thought so. I was hoping he would die when he was like, oh. Uh, well, first, so he like tells her he loves her, and then he's like, "Oh yeah, I just told her I love her because like that's the magic combination, you know. You just tell a girl you love that's her." That's magic she... words. And then Niles is like, "Yeah, bro, that's so sweet." And then he's like, "In my mind, though, I do love her. It is true." And I was like, "I can't wait till you fucking die, dude." Yeah, yeah. Go fuck I was hoping yourself. for a real killing Mr. Griffin moment yeah. where like they were going to scare him, hand. and then like he just out of uh, hand. Out hand. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my good. But Madison's the best. I think we can all agree. Yeah, Madison's yeah. great. Madison's a queen. Uh, Christy Grange. Oh, and she's a literal queen. Homecoming queen. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Uh, and fashion model who works for a prominent agency based in New York good City. Good for her. So I she's... was like, she got her She got her dream. She knew she what she was going to do. Mm-hmm. She, she was, There was no question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was like, I am not about to get pregnant with you. I have plans. That's right. Yeah. Um, okay, Christy Grange is the sister of Terrible Peter and Terrible Niles. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Hat and is being like and also terrible younger brother whose name I don't remember. Oh yeah, but he's just he's like a Eric. wild force of nature, right? Eric. But someone yeah, has to take care of right. Eric. Why don't we remember How come now? Eric, Eric and not can't when come I'm home reading. alone. That was Christy's situation was insane. Yes. In that, like, not necessarily her workload. It's like some families, if they're big, you just got to do a lot of chores. It sucks, and that's the way it is. But the fact that her brothers didn't have to do a single fucking thing and made were me nightmares. so mad. They're nightmares They're in the kitchen. Nightmares. They're oh my bad God. leaving the ice cream out. People. Oh my God. They're bad people. And they make fun of Christy all the time because she's moody. It's like, hi, she's moody because you don't do anything yeah. at the house. No, they just make it worse. Like they like smear like raspberry jam all over the place and like Yeah, and they don't give her rides to school. I know. And he's like, Yeah, I looked for you and, and oh but the way they treat her there where he's like, Oh, well, look here, we got our bright little spot of sunshine. Oh, aren't you smiling? And she's like, I'm tired. I've had to clean up the house. And then and she's like, Also, I had to walk home. You were supposed to take give me a ride. And he's like, oh, I didn't see you because uh, I was uh, working on my baseball stuff in my head. And <laughs> Yeah, she- I was like planning out sports <laughs> in my head. <laughs> and then she's like, I walk home the same way every day. He's like, oh, do you? I was like, what are these characters? <laughs> and then we find out and you're like, oh, they're so much worse. The yeah. family, this family is super fucked up. Yeah. The, the poor mom. sucks. Yeah, the poor mom. I loved that she came around and she was like, mm-hmm. Fuck you, Christy gets to do whatever she Were wants. Were you guys yeah. kind of getting like slight Peggy Hill vibes from that mom? I have not seen King of the Hill, but I have heard a lot about her and sure. Okay. Yeah, I think that tracks. Okay. That she's 
Like she thinks she's, she's like got sweet. like a streak of independence yeah. still, but like yeah. she's in Hank's house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's sad. Peggy Hill is, I love her character, but also like one of the saddest characters in fiction. Yeah. <laughs> in all of fiction. In all of fiction. <laughs> in all of fiction. Speaking of one of the saddest characters in all of fiction. Oh, no. Laura. 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 Oh, do we, we, let's find out what happened to Christy. Uh, is a housewife and works as an administrative that assistant. That made me so mad. Wait, so what's her deal? She, Sorry. she, uh, housewife and works as an administrative assistant for an insurance agency in Modesto, Michigan. Oh, so she never left Modesto. Right. Here's the thing. Do what gives you joy. Maybe her house is like, um. It leads with is a housewife. Yeah. I, I was just disappointed specifically for her. Yeah. I don't look yeah. down on being a stay at home mom. But that's like her prison in high school. I know. Yes. And that's, that's the thing. That's why I'm upset for her is because of everything we just talked about where she was like, it's, she got like trained yes. yeah, to live that life. And then she never left it, even and, though she didn't want it. And we don't see anything in the book that would lead us to believe that she runs her house differently. Lee. Or like she'd you be know happy what I mean? with that. Well, right, it, yeah. it, does, it does not mention that she has any kids. And a couple of these... A couple of them have had kids when we check in on them three mm-hmm. years later. Okay, so huh, here, how about this? How about this? She's um, she's worked it out in her favor. She's like, I know what men want, so I'm going to find myself an old rich coot, and I'm going <laughs> to marry him. I'll find me a coot, and then I'm going to, um, yeah, I'll be a housewife. I'll like hire people to clean the house. I'll like eat bonbons in front of the TV while I watch my soaps. Yeah. yeah. Can y'all help me connect the dots? Uh, her her name here is listed as Christy Grange Brummel, which is the same as Paula. Did Paula have a brother that she started? Oh, yes. yeah. She's been dating Paul, Paul, Paula's she brother. She goes with him to the homecoming dance. And then they keep seeing one another. So she marries apparently her high school sweetheart, becomes a housewife, and works like, what is it, part Never mind. Time? She didn't find it. Oh, yes. you know what? It's Administrative uh, assistant okay. for an insurance agency. Okay. Paula Brummel's dad. The mom dies. The dad is about to. He's very old. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She marries him. Sure, there we oh, go for some event for some <laughs> eventual money him. for eventual money. The end. And Christy never learned to play the piano, so there's no conflict. No, that's yeah. the wrong one. It's the wrong Paula. one. Damn it, Paula. <laughs> Paula, not Holly. Paula, not Holly. Hashtag Paula, not Holly. <laughs> <laughs> there are too many girls. I mean, she does make the point, Lodunk, in the interview. That it's like, well, I can't have a group without a lot of characters. And I, it was like more fun and more of a challenge if I gave each one of them like a home life that you see. Yeah. And I agree, but she needed to do a little more <laughs> um, yeah, it's, to I, make them distinct. And like all the rest of her books, there's like a core cast of like four or five characters. Mm-hmm. Yes. And th- that's all that's those are the only people we ever know. And we learn typical. to love and hate those characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like this is so many. It's so many characters. Here's what I would say. Um, my Just word of advice it, to Low Dunk is um, <laughs> include like four chapters of each of those characters meeting each other for the first time. Where they just have to keep shut saying up. what their deal is. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Uh, uh, shout shit. out to our I Patreon mini I appreciate so. this. I don't, I am being personally attacked <laughs> on this episode. Uh, this has nothing to do with my junior high writing and I don't <laughs> appreciate it being brought <laughs> Outside of the paywall. <laughs> if you guys want to listen to that, uh, patreon.com slash Teen Creeps. Next character. Laura Snow. Oh, sad. So Very we, sad. We, we, know, we know Laura's deal. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's some sad shit. Like, her whole life is sad shit. Yeah. Yeah. So she's she's kind she's of manipulated by her mom, she's too. she's super insecure. Mm-hmm. Well, but the mom... The mom, like, doesn't is, want her to visit the dad. Like, that oh right where she's like mm, you're oh, gonna yeah, leave me that's alone that's terrible yeah that, that is sucks. terrible because I was like no but she built up her daughter's self esteem I I totally forgot that she like won't let her see her yeah. dad so it's no wonder that she responds to Peter being like hey we should hang out yeah and she already had a huge crush on Peter mm-hmm. yeah yeah so sad uh, and her shit is sad here too I think. Uh, Laura Snow Keller is a housewife in Cumberland, Rhode Island. She is the wife of an insurance salesman and the mother of a daughter, Mona Irene, four months. Her mother lives Irene. in a condo two blocks away. Oh, her mother. Her mm. mother is still there, and Irene is I, still like a, a formative part of her yeah. existence. It is fair 
that the characters don't just get happy endings Mm -hmm. all across the board. It just makes me sad. (laughs) Yeah, I just kind of just throw Laura a bone. Because, okay, so the story with Laura is that she is um, overweight and uh, struggles with body image issues, which is not helped at all by this town she lives in. No. By her family, by people she meets and knows. It's just always about Laura's weight. I mean, she's best friends with Madison. No one feels good about themselves when they're hanging out with Madison all the time. But Madison's such a good person. Madison is such a good person. She's such you a good can't person. Hate her. No. She loves everyone. She stands by everyone. Mm-hmm. She's the first to have Laura's back when her own ex boyfriend treats her badly. I just, I will not hear <laughs> a single bad word against Madison. I don't even care if it's indirect. <laughs> but yeah, Laura's life is just so she, and then we hear how the guys talk about her. So she comes over That's to horrible. What, what's the Granger girls? Grange girl's name? Christy. Christy. Christy's house, and then we see that, like, we see it from both sides, and it sucks. Like, we hear that P- Peter's like, "Oh, that blimp you brought over. Oh, I could see two things about her that I like." <laughs> like talking about her boobs, um, and like and just then Niles is actually he seems like he's a human mm-hmm. about it. He's like. She's not that bad. She was really nice. Like, I don't think that's fair to talk about her that way. And I was like, oh, no. But then didn't he call her pathetic? Probably. I mean, maybe. I think think the book (laughs) calls her pathetic. I was just like, well, at least he's like trying to like sympathize. Yeah. I mean, so that's why I feel like just disappears into the narrative until he uh, turns out to be the worst. Until he breaches the surface. Except for the abusive dad. Right. (laughs) Mr. Reed is the worst. Yeah. But. So for that reason, when he went over to Laura's on the night of homecoming, I thought maybe he was there to be a good guy and like, oh, maybe he had a crush on Laura and he didn't want to say anything about it because he was like, thought he'd be made fun of for it. Which and then, may still be the way he sees it. That's yeah. so disgusting. You're right. Ooh. I think that is the way he sees it. But I don't know. Ugh. He talked about it with Peter. Like, oh, I just thought I'd like. Well, slip in there because that's she's like him fucking easy. That's him like trying to revisionize revisionist history. It well, I'm and, sure and trying to relate to his brother the way he knows his Ugh. brother talks about women. Yeah. yeah, which is why like Niles does a terrible thing, but it's like no, that's Peter's fault. Yeah, that his brother is like that. Yeah, well, because he listens to everything that Peter and I'm sure they get that from their, their dad. dad. Yeah, totally. Um, I just think they're both evil. Yeah. I mean, this is also true. Yeah. Stop trying to defend Niles. I think Niles is great. <laughs> <laughs> Niles has a lot going for I him. I just see a lot of myself in Niles. <laughs> Look, um, if he's never been described as Cordy Lumps, I'm fine with him. <laughs> and even if he has, you're fine I'm with still him. fine. I love a low dunk boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so she uh, basically, like, very sad. He is, like, secretly fucking her. Yeah. And he refuses to do anything in public with her. Mm -hmm. And then they have to drive to another town to see movies together. And then he like (sighs) she starts to try and be like, hey, like, I feel like we should talk about this. And she has this whole imagination of like, oh, I'm going to say I think we should talk. Yeah. And she imagines that he's going to be like, hey, I feel that way, too. Like, we should be more serious. But instead, she's like, I was afraid that like you'd reject me. After I just got out of this relationship with Madison, but like I'm totally in this with you. Instead, she like meekly tries to bring it up. He's like, I can't hear you, which is fake. Yeah. <laughs> like you can hear her. You're in the he's same a car. Fucking liar. He's mm-hmm. a fucking liar. He gaslights her like crazy. Then he's like, he's like, what? You don't like what we have? Like, wh- if you don't want to hang out with me, like, I get it. I guess we just shouldn't see each other. And she's like, no, no, no. And he's like, I'm not I'm not about to like make you do anything you don't want to do. That's like not who I am. Ugh. Oh, yeah, there's so much of of gaslighting Laura. Yeah. In, yeah. Into just like she is she has like no say in like she cries after they have sex the first time and then he's like, "Well, you want to hang out again?" and she's like, "Yeah." Well, and she has to comfort him after she's crying. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fucking bullshit. Yep. So then she like goes on this diet because she wants to like wear this dress that she got. Oh God, she loses yeah, six pounds. She like sa- starves herself. Yeah. Anytime she's not in her mother's presence, she's not eating. Yeah. yeah. And then she and also like, mom, let your daughter eat healthier if she wants. I know the mom. Here's what I thought: the mm. mom was like pushing food on her daughter, like to keep her there. 
to to be like, well, we're both doing it kind of thing. You think that's her mother's coping mechanism as well? Is I just food? like I want to suck. Like, like, yeah, I'm I'm indulging you. I'm constantly yeah, yeah, indulging sure, yeah. you. Like, yeah, yeah. Why Whatever would you, you want, leave me. stay here I, with me. Look, I give you everything. Yeah. I'm like, don't worry about it. Eat more. Eat more. Eat more. <sighs> well, and then Laura's there was like, life is so sad. I know. And then that was the thing too, where like sometimes Laura would remember is she was talking about like previously they tried to go on diets together but yeah. then like her mom would like make cookies for them and then it would just like break the diet yeah mm-hmm. that's what made me sad is yeah. that in the book laura is never talking about a struggle she has with food it's always like her mom yeah. insisting she eat badly yeah which is so sad yeah yeah well i mean then that's I, you know, just like one of the themes of the book, right, is that everyone is inheriting their problems from the previous generation, yeah. Yeah. which is also part of the science experiment with the rats, is that they're inheriting their problems from the previous generation. That's oh. true. So oh thematically God. appropriate, but still cruel Low to the animals. Still amazing. cruel to the animals. Like, cruel to the humans as well. Yeah. yeah. But humans are animals. Um, Lodong is so good. Yeah. Can I? The, so good. Thinking about really that. The, I did really like this book. I did too. There was, okay, there was a part where like as the chapter went on, I was like, no, Laura. <laughs> it's when we think she's going to the party, the slumber party. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Exactly. And my she, feeling. <laughs> she's curling her hair and her hair looks great. And I was like, oh, good. She's like, she's like proud she of how she looks. Party. Like she's excited to go to this oh, party. That's something else I remember about Holly. It's Holly's party. It's Holly's birthday party. <laughs> Holly's party. Good job, Lindsay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so Holly's party. They're all yeah. going to Holly's party. That's Holly's personality. Is that she, she has, has a party. party and a car? <laughs> Wait, that's not even her. And dies. <laughs> um, so she she's like her mom comes in. She's like, oh, you look beautiful. It's gonna be so sad that there's no boys at this party. And she's like, yeah. Um, oh, by that's the way, how beautiful you look. Oh, I know. And she's like, I wish I could take a picture of you. And then she's like. Oh, by the way, mom, um, it's not a slumber party anymore. She changed the plan. So I'm getting a ride from a friend and I'll be coming ha- back late at night. And so then I was like, oh, did they just change the plan? Or maybe because she's new to the group, they just lied. Mm. Like, I didn't That's know what, what it was. I was afraid of. I thought that they were fucking with her. Yeah. But it's much worse. Mm-hmm. And it's that she's going to go Let's have a secret date with Peter. Have a secret, secret sex date, date yep. with Peter by the river. And she cries. <sighs> She like she has sex with him that night. Yes. And it's her first time and she cries and he's like, oh, "Are you okay?" Presumably Peter's first time too, right? No. Because he and Madison weren't fucking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he was Peter's trying to push her to too. fuck and he couldn't get it and but he was yeah. lying. Yeah. <sighs> Although no member there was like a slew of girls he was seeing like before, but maybe he didn't have sex with I them don't before Madison. I think he oh, had what? Sex. I think it was maybe I he think did because there was like a there was a He's summer like, where they were she's apart. She's letting me yeah there do was, whatever I yeah, want. Yeah, there was to her. a summer where they were apart. But yeah, maybe he but just he seemed surprised around. by how easy it is to pressure Laura into having sex with him. He right. is. I mean, maybe because it's a first. I mean, maybe date. he's just surprised at how easily. Yeah, how how quickly how readily it she's. Ugh, I mean, just so awful. Ugh, Jesus, which does imply that like. He has really been pressuring every single yes. girl he's ever oh, been totally. with. Oh, totally. I mean, yeah. it, look, we know that Madison is perfect, of course. Obviously, she's but that's the best. Pro- that's the only way that she was able to defend against his advances. Yeah. Is because she is perfect. Because she's superhuman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everyone else probably just folds. Yeah. Well, because they're just like, God, it's stop. Well, because they have like actual human insecurities where yeah. she is like a goddess sent from above and she doesn't. Yeah. No flaws. No mm-hmm. flaws. Madison. Flawless. Uh, are you ready for the next character? Yeah. Oh, let's just finish up what ends up happening with Laura. So instead of breaking up with her, he just like ghosts her basically. And she's waiting for two and a half hours for him to pick her up for prom. This is for a specific date that they have set together (sighs) that he is going to pick her up for homecoming. Homecoming. I'm sorry. And the, the last conversation we witnessed between the two of them was him being like, no, I don't want to. Oh, really? And so all of a sudden we find out that she did get him to agree to go with that her. That sucks. So that made me sad on top of that because I was like, oh, no, he fought you on it. And then you brought it up again. And then he gave in. Or you like, thought he gave girl, in. Girl, yeah. if you have to keep badgering him in that way, he does not want to take you. Yeah. So sad. 
It was really sad. So she waits and waits. He doesn't show up. Niles shows up. Niles sexually assaults her. Uh, she bites his tongue. He runs off. He says very mean things to her. He's like, well, you know what? You're just a joke. Like, why do you think he never, uh, P- Peter never wanted to like be seen with you because you're disgusting and he's way better than you and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Very mean. She then attempts suicide by j- eating all of her mom's sleeping pills. Then uh, she decides she's like so horrified by what's happened. She's like, I just need to move with my dad and start a new life and start over. I can't be around any of these people anymore. And that's Laura's story. Yeah. And she oh, winds God. up in Rhode Island. I was so afraid of the scene where Niles yeah, me attacks too. her. I was oh. like, yeah. Oh, no. Well, and then oh, like as no. I I sort of wanted just like for the sake of the narrative for her suicide to take. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that, like that would be like a real fire point for yeah. for everything that happens Rallying after this. Cry. Yeah, not that it's not powerful as it is, but it's it it felt like a a low dunk, like backing away from yeah. like what she was actually driving towards. It would have been cool too if she had killed Niles. Yeah, on accident, but just by biting his tongue so hard. <laughs> but I she thought bit his that tongue might happen so too. And then at that point, I was like, that doesn't really seem out of control though that seems totally fair i mean that just seems like self-defense yeah yeah but i think she would like maybe that would make her i don't know if i killed someone in self-defense i think i'd be like oh fuck i killed someone yeah that'd be oh. tough oh shit oh, oh, oh god oh god oh god, oh, god. what, what do is, i do who am i now we, we gotta get our story straight <laughs> self <laughs> <laughs> jane reardon we've talked about abusive jane. dad abusive dad delicate beautiful Jane w- with a tick on the left side of her face and an abusive dad. Oh, no. yeah. She gets a tick. Uh. She gets stressed out. Okay, the part where the... This reminded me of that scene in Mad Men where uh, Joan's husband makes her play the... Uh, um, yeah, uh, the harp? accordion. Accordion <laughs> in front of everybody. Like, he's like, come on, Joan, you just play. guessing an instrument? Because I was doing just this, like, yeah. Oh, okay. I, was, yeah. I was doing harp okay. hands. Because I haven't, I stopped watching the show at that point. Mm-hmm. I all I know is that he rapes her. He does rape her. Oh yeah, sure um, does. And I think before they're married, but when they're engaged. And I think the accordion incident is is after directly after. after. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And he's like, "Come on, Joni, play the accordion. Do it, do it, do it." And then so she plays the accordion for him and his friends. And you can just see on her face that she's like, "I want to fucking die." So that I, it just felt so familiar when the part. When the dad is like, well, you have this secret club and you sing a song. Let's oh, hear yeah. the song. Sing, sing the, the song. song now. Come on, sing, sing the, the right fucking now. song. And then Jane, I don't like that you're keeping all these secrets from me. I don't want you to join a club if like years later, your mom won't even sing the song for me. I wanted him to die starting. Oh, then. I mean, this guy is a capital V villain. Yeah. Like, yeah. He is the biggest like, piece of shit in this book. Fully ready for him yeah. to die. And then. I would have been upset if this book ended without him dying. Yeah. yeah. What I wanted to happen was I wanted them all to kill him. That would have been I cool. was upset that, that, that it was dope. only Jane, honestly. Well, Jane. And that it ends up poorly for Jane because of it. Yeah. Jane Reardon is a patient at the Forest View Psychiatric Hospital in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Yeah. So I mean, not, I thought she was going to be in jail. She's not so. in jail. So you know what? Good for her. Yeah. yeah it's Good only been her. three years. That seems like a reasonable stay. She'll probably get out. She's fine. But the, oh, uh, just to finish. Oh, how- she can just astral project out of there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And then, like, steal a sister's body. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, how the um, the singing thing ends is horrible, too, because Jane, like, freaks out and goes upstairs. And then she oh, hears, yeah. like, a crash and then, like, a cry. And then her mom cries singing <sighs> the song to the dad. So awful. Yeah, he is truly, truly He's horrible. the worst. He is the worst. Miles would... <laughs> Uh, Niles would have been the worst if Laura hadn't bitten his tongue. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. Although, uh, which is worse? I guess a lifetime of beating. Yeah. Is yeah. worse than a rape. Also, who's to say right. that the dad hasn't raped the mom? Oh, totally. True. Absolutely. I'm sure has. he has. I think it's this. It's on the level. It's just that um, we've only seen the one incident. Yeah. I think they're probably equally terrible. I think they're both equally terrible people. I'm glad the dad's dead. Kind of wish Niles was dead. Yeah. Niles skates through this thing with no consequences. Yeah. Yeah. Whatsoever. I do. Isn't it Christy who is like, I only wish we could have gotten my brother mm-hmm. too. Yeah. So she does know. Good for Christy. 
Well, yeah, I mean, I maybe don't... she just wants both of her brothers to get their comeuppance <laughs> yeah, because they're bad people. I thought it was, I was like, haha, what a cute prank to play on him when I thought all that had happened, all that they had done to Peter was strip him of his clothes, shave all of his hair off and put him in a dress. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, that's pretty good punishment. And then when I found out they like carved, did they carve yeah. or did they shave? No, they it carved. It says carved. It was blood. That I guess is what got changed. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I imagine that <laughs> the word didn't make it onto his head at all. <clears throat> yeah. That probably in the original, he was just shaved and put in a dress. Um, it's specifically I in that it's Laura's, Laura's dress. dress. Yeah. I was like, Hell yeah, ladies. Mm -hmm. That is a nice touch, although dangerous. Um, yeah. But the fact that they shaved his head and then carved the word slut into it, that's I was bold. like, that's fucking sick. I support yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Also, I was like, is Irene there? Because I think she was. She was oh, there. She was she totally, totally there. So here's the thing. I support everything these girls are doing if Irene is not the one making them do it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't like Irene exerting in, like undue influence to like incite violence on these girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think she likes having an army. Them. Yeah, I read like that's that's where like I part ways with her is that she likes being the leader of this like uncontrollable yeah. group of of girls. Like yeah. she loves it. Yeah, I mean, I, I. I'm fine with that because it felt kind of Lord of the Flies to me. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, because they had a leader pushing them to do it. Like they were letting their baser instincts oh, that's come out. So then they could just be like, oh, well, Irene told us to do it. Yeah. Right. Like they get a moral so pass. It's like yeah. They, they could have. Yeah. Yeah. I, here's a, I, I was not morally opposed to, aside from like. The stuff that they did with the teacher, I was just kind of like, oh, well, he didn't deserve that. It didn't seem that bad to me. I mean, I guess it sucks to have pig shit all over your, your classroom. That seemed pretty bad. But I, I was like... I was like, they're fucking losing it. Yeah. yeah. Like, for that, I was like, that they're one doesn't... They're just excited to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. They want to they, they wanna keep doing Let's the keep violence. keep doing it. But for the stuff with Peter, I guess, like, I... We all know that I'm very much a vengeance person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, I same, love vigilante same. justice. Same. So I'm I'm against like like I'm against like institutionalized violence, mm -hmm. but and I know it makes no sense and it's completely uh uh what's it called like hi hypocritical to be like yeah but I trust like these people to to <laughs> do justice, but at the same time I'm like yeah but I do like I I trust well, I know what's right I, I don't <laughs> like that they smashed up the science teacher no I office. didn't like that no. Um, especially because that was Tammy's dad. I thought that was pretty yeah. fucked up yeah. to do well, to a sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I'd like, especially when Tammy's going to bat for him and if they had talked to Erica that she would be like, they would have found that out. was the problem. They should have fucking talked to the person they're trying like, to revenge she for. She was right. rightfully excluded from being sent to the science fair. So I thought that one was fucked up. And I will say, I don't think that the word slut should have been carved into Peter's head, even though I'm like, that is a nice touch, ladies. I do think he deserves the shaving and the dress for what he did to Laura and Madison. Mm -hmm. I believe a slut word should, should have, have gone been... on Niles's head. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think slut so too. Or, or a worse, or rapist or something, or like, just I mean, the... fuck it, carve a swastika up in that thing. <laughs> I also think it would have been more... Um, uh, like it, we would have hit that toxic masculinity harder had it been both the guys because then they both would have been there and they both would have known that it was not giant men, men attacking yeah, them, but that yeah. it was a group of women, young women. Mm -hmm. I do love so that detail. I wanted that, them that to Peter's know about says it's guys. Yeah, that yeah. Beat them up. It's perfect. And Niles, of idiot. course, is like, well, yeah. Only a group of very violent large men could overtake my brother, the god. <laughs> and then they're like, <laughs> to Christy. Uh, he knows it wasn't men. And Christy's like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course I'm so he sure he's going to admit that women <laughs> yeah. did this to him. Um, but I do wish that they had known about Niles and did it to both of them and that Niles got the worst punishment. Yeah. Well, and this is yeah. like, this is like the, the whole thing with like the morality of this book and like, you know, how this is like nothing really nets out the way that we think it should right like mm -hmm. there, there's so many so many of like the scales here that just don't really balance out including like niles never getting his comeuppance yeah which is like 
yeah, people don't necessarily get their comeuppance. Yeah. I just wanted him to. I, just I know. Him to Here's the thing. It's so fiction. Bad. Let us have it. I just want the word slut carved in denials of the head. <laughs> Gotta be so good. Oh, but I do, I am totally fine with them trashing the principal's office. Oh, fuck the oh, principal. Oh, yeah. like the principal. Fuck that guy. He, you raised that money Over a thousand dollars. girl's soccer mm-hmm. team. Mm-hmm. Not some fucking boys warm-up suits. Mm-hmm. So they're not Fuck even going to use guy. those during the game. No. Take that axe Come to on. that fucking office. Have at it. Really quick. Uh, or, and this is like another step really extra fucked up, but I was thinking about the Niles thing. Cutting his tongue off. Whoa. This is crazy. No, this is crazy. This is crazy. But at this point, I would be being crazy. And I'd be like, you know what? We're going to finish what Laura started. Oh, if I was being be truly chop, crazy, chop. Mm-hmm. I'd chop off his testicles. I mean, just bits and bits. Yeah, to find just, the just local wherever, wherever bit. Yeah, and then find stuff. the local pig farm. Mm, feed feed him to, to the pigs. pigs. Mm-hmm. Make him easy watch. Clean up. <laughs> oh, easy clean Easy, yes. beautiful cover girl. Yeah, you make... Oh, yeah, this is what you do. You um, cut off uh, Niles' tongue, right? Uh-huh. And then he's like, you, no more. And you then you take like, him to the farm. Mm-hmm. Oh, and you're saying his tongue because Laura bit his tongue? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you say, finish what Laura started. Yeah, cut yeah. off the tongue. Then you start like chopping him up. Uh-huh. And then Peter's like, no, no, no. And then you, you say, like, you made him like this. And then the last thing Peter sees is his brother getting eaten up by pigs. And then you feed him to the pigs, too. Oh, I would leave Peter alive. Oh. I leave Peter alive after making him watch all that. Do, <gasps> do you make oh. Peter eat his brother's tongue? That. Oh, you make oh, Peter eat his I brother's like tongue. And I like that because like you made this, now you consume it. That's and right. um, um, you have the pigs eat his balls. Yeah. He survives. Who, Peter's he survives. balls? Peter. He okay. survives. Oh, Peter's balls? Yeah. See, I do think like if I'm going to be dispensing justice that I have to not dispense it fairly as well. Mm. All Peter did was cheat and fuck up a girl's like, like fuck with her head. Mm. I don't think mm, I see having so th- a secret no girlfriend and cheating Peter's on her crime. is punishable to that degree. I would say though that there. I'll make him watch us cut up his rapist brother. Though. <laughs> I will say also though that his his uh, his first time with Laura, I would say is. Uh, probably a rape. I don't think so. Really? Yeah. I think I she said know. yes and did in fact want to have sex with him, but felt really conflicted about it. Like oh, that was, I don't know. That's been some of my sexual experiences that I didn't yeah, and some fully want to have it's... sex. I felt very mm-hmm. ambivalent yeah. about it, but I went along with it. Maybe she just went along with it. Like, I wasn't even like pressured. It was just like, I don't really care about you that much. But I guess that's I what really we're supposed like to do. You're not. I guess she has great, a really big crush on but, him. And she, she does. Yeah, yeah, she has a huge crush on him. She and thinks she, she's in love with him. She thinks that they're, they're going to have a relationship. Mm-hmm. She probably thinks that he wouldn't do that with her unless he really cared about Actually, her. Actually, so she I thought think, he loved her. You're right. Mm-hmm. She thought he loved her. And here's the thing. I think if he were to be like, I'm going to get explicit consent from you. Like, I'm not. I'm only going forward if yes. I think she would have said yes. And yeah, I think he that's probably true. did. Because after she cries, he does get worried for a second. He's like, yeah. oh, yeah. why are you crying? And she's like, no, it's fine. I'm okay. And he's like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, I think so. You, I don't think you I are think fairer. shaving and dress. Cool. Yeah. See, fine I'm, with that. I turn into like an evil, crazy person quickly <laughs> when it comes to vengeance. And so, well, you know me. I'm very concerned you're with very fairness. Fair. You're very fair. And justice. Yes. So I will go fucking crazy on anyone who I believe deserves it. Right. But I feel like I, I'm like, it's just, it's not right for me it's to just, do that to it's, you. I, that yeah. doesn't seem fair. I it am Aria with fun. a list. <laughs> yes. That's me. I don't like, if you, but it's, Aria's list is correct. I mean, I think well, we that just, whole universe is filled with awful people. <laughs> so like, I think we Aria's just happen to agree on her, Aria's me. list. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a coincidence. <laughs> Every one of those people is a violent rapist. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And murderer. <laughs> I just think that Peter I mean, is a violent fair. rapist waiting to happen. So I'm just. Like, but you know what? We're different people. And so I understand that. And like, I respect your yeah, right. And so I, to I not totally <laughs> hear what you're saying. I res- mutilate him. And I respect that, like, you have your opinions that he should be mutilated. Yes. And I'm not going to force my opinion that he shouldn't on you. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But. Even the more mild punishment of feed him his brother's tongue and <laughs> and watch his brother be eaten alive by pigs. Yeah. 
That's pretty rough. Oh, I've decided he doesn't have to eat the tongue, but he does oh. have to watch me mutilate his rapist brother. Okay. Yeah. Tough but fair. For me, he's like, always eating yeah, the tongue. Yeah, because like you made this rapist. <laughs> I think he eats the tongue too. Yeah, he eats yeah, the tongue. Yeah, now you watch us fuck up this rapist. Mm-hmm. But like for me, just for me, a, yeah. tongue, a tongue is a bridge too far. You guys, um, let right us know. <laughs> Tweet at us. Hashtag eat the tongue, tongue. No tongue. <laughs> Yeah, hashtag brother's tongue, hashtag no brother's tongue. <laughs> or hashtag no tongue, hashtag brother eat tongue. Brother, brother eat, eat tongue. tongue. <laughs> brother eat tongue is, that's the hashtag, brother eat yeah. tongue. Okay, so hashtag no tongue, hashtag brother eat tongue. Let us know yeah, how you feel. Let us know. Um, Actually, we'll just put a poll up on our Yeah, Twitter. we'll put a poll up. We'll pin it to the top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, you you uh, weigh in. Yeah, weigh in. Let us know. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm on team brother eat tongue. Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. Right. We, so you got You have to take responsibility for the thing you created. Yes. That's one. going back inside you. Two to yes. one. I just. I would like to inflict that with uh, mental trauma. Pack in, pack out. I mean, that's a. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's like when you go camping. Like whatever you put out there, you got to bring it back. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> so you, you got to eat that, that time. You know back that's a philosophy, right. and I appreciate Thank that. Thank you so much. Yeah. The last character that we catch up with before the book just ends. Okay. Oh my God! There's somebody else. <laughs> Well, it's Irene. Oh. Irene Stark is the oh, assistant yeah, principal at mm-hmm. Modesta High School. Uh, for the fourth consecutive year, she is the sponsor of the Modesta chapter of the national sorority called Daughters of Eve. Sick way to end a book. Yeah. That she and continues okay her reign of terror. That, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's sort of funny because I'm like, oh, no, that's not good. But also, this is probably going to happen less because now there's a woman as a mm-hmm. system principal exactly. and things are going to turn around. But it also does make you wonder, like, how did she get the assistant principal yeah. job? Oh, true. Probably she by using, probably using her scary paintings. <laughs> Do you remember she has scary paintings? Oh, they're so full of anger. <laughs> this one, what's her name? It's the psychic one, it's right? It's Tammy. Tammy. Yeah, she like goes to see her in her apartment. She's like, these paintings, oh, they're so modern. <laughs> So modern and frightening. The colors. She's like, now I know. Now I know what I was so afraid of. It was the paintings. (laughs) It's the painting of the hideous painting. (laughs) Um, So then the blood that she sees on the the candle. candle. So at the beginning of the book, Tammy, her first psychic experience we experience is she Mm -hmm. sees there's like blood coming out of a candle and then she blinks and then it's not bloody. But she's like, oh, God, something fucked up is going to happen. Bye. I quit the club. And then later she's like, never mind, I'm back. And then later she's like, uh, I quit again. Um, so what was the what do we think the blood was symbolizing? Just like all of it or like one thing? I think it would I be think too, Mr. Reardon. You think Mr. Reardon? Yeah. You think that she was seeing the the pan on to the back of the head? Yeah, I already? think she was seeing the eventual outcome. Mm. Mm. I think th- I think that's almost too neat. Like I think this book d- like resists being so like the one thing can't symbolize just one other thing. So you think it's just all of it? I think it's all the chaos. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think it's all of it because that is what led to the blood. Yeah. I think we probably think. The I think same we, thing. yeah, we probably, yeah. Do. Like the wax is like all the things. And then the wick is like the blood and, and the, and the flame flame is flame like is Irene. Irene. <gasps> mm-hmm. oh. Yeah. Wow. Wow. The wick is the girl's. <laughs> Irene is the flame and right, she and melts the candle of their mm-hmm. mind. And the, yes. and the candlestick is the school. Okay. Uh huh. And like the room is Modesto. Oh my God. It's so good. And the <laughs> and, school is Michigan. <laughs> and the girls are a symbol for women. This is so stupid. And the chairs in the room are the other townspeople. <laughs> I, I think we cracked it. I yeah, think we, I think we it cracked out. it. So symbolic. <laughs> Stupid. Um, what do you guys think the pencils in the room are? <laughs> the penises, pencils, they're penises. The pencils are the penises. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Silly old me. <laughs> oh my god, that was so dumb. Um, is that everything in the book? I think it is. I, we covered the whole plot by talking about each girl. Yeah, I mean, because th- most yeah, of what really this worked is, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> most of what the book is is just like. Here are the small stories of each of these characters Mm -hmm. and how they explode into. Yeah. 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 And the book ends before the like, where are they now? Mm -hmm. With what's Jane? Jane. About to bring the pan down on her dad's head. Here, why don't you read the last paragraph or the last thing? 
Peter Peregrine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so just the the very last paragraph. You know, we'll we'll go a, a, a little bit earlier. She, Jane, lifted the skillet high above her head as she as high as she was able. She closed her eyes. The, sm- the smell of lemon scented hair tonic filled her nostrils, and beneath it there was something faint, lingering odor of pipe tobacco. There was nothing of her mother, nothing at all. The left side of her face twitched violently. With her eyes still closed, Jane braced herself and brought the skillet down with all her strength onto the top of her father's head. That's Ooh. a good last Yeah, passage. that's pretty cool. That does remind me that I um, had highlighted a few pa- uh, passages, and these are both Jane passages. Um, Is it just uh, evidence it- of Lodunk being a, a wonderful writer? Yes. Yay. I love this. <laughs> How could anyone know for sure what went on in all the neat white houses that lined the streets of a pleasant and sleepy little town like Modesta? Behind each door there was a family, and every family held its own secrets, clutched tightly away from the eyes of the rest of the world. You didn't dishonor your family by discussing problems with others. Everything here in Modesta was very polite. And then, this is what you were talking about, Kelly— Jane pressed her hands against the side of her f- sides of her face Ugh. to control the twitching. Mm. From the room below, there came a thud and a high-pitched cry. A moment later, a thin, wavering voice began to sing. No! It's so horrible. Um, so horrible. Here, I've, I've, I've got a passage that I really liked uh, describing Kelly and her relationship with her mom uh, since, since the R. divorce. Kelly. Yes, our Kelly. <laughs> Me and my mom. No, I mean our oh, Kelly, the I see singer. R. Kelly. Oh, <laughs> You know, every time people talk about me, they're talking about R. Kelly. (laughs) I actually did mean our Kelly, the singer. And then I realized (laughs) R. Kelly. R. Kelly. (laughs) La, la, la. Her mom had built her, her whole life on the premise that she was half of a perfect couple, and now she wasn't anything. She was a cartoon character, walking around the house, emptying ashtrays that didn't need emptying, cooking big meals that no one could eat, changing sheets that didn't need changing. And she was, and it was all so stupid because she should have known. I liked that. Uh, Kelly's, the whole description of like why Kelly has turned into such a giant bitch, mm-hmm. or, that was very good. Yeah, that was cool. Um, I forgot that there was this, um, this is Christy's mom and dad. I fucking loved this passage because she has been arguing with her husband like, is it really so unreasonable right. for us to like let Christy have like one day off a week? Like, this goes couldn't on for the boys paragraphs. do something? <laughs> yeah, and she's like, I don't think it's a big deal. I think she's right. And he's like, I don't want to give in to her just because blah 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 her fits and blah 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 blah. And then he reaches a point where he decides he just doesn't want to talk about it anymore. I remember this part. This is such a good passage, and it's so indicative of not indicative. It's so demonstrative. Um. Yeah, I think uh, of all of the Twitter arguments that go on now for a lot of like super patronizing men. Mm -hmm. Um, Look, it's been a long week. We're both tired. This is a silly argument. Her husband's voice had settled into that solid, reasonable tone that she knew so well and liked so little. It made her feel diminished somehow, childish, as though nothing she said was of any value. Yet at the same time, it contained affection there had never been a moment in the duration of their marriage that she doubted George's love for her, and that, in a way, made everything harder. You couldn't resent someone who loved you, could you? Mm. Not unless there was something wrong with your value system. Yet tonight she did resent him. There was no other word for the way she was feeling as she sat listening to that familiar, self-assured voice. Ugh. Um, That's so good. Yeah. It's I, so good. I had that mark, too. And then uh, a little bit later, like as their conversation ends... Um, as she's like trying to redirect it, um, da, 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 he said, "No, he says, uh, how about some coffee?" Her husband said. Now his eyes were back on the newspaper. Uh, it's on, and the cups are in the drying rack. I didn't ask you where it was. I said, "How about some?" I know. I'm sorry. And a Grange got to her feet and went to the kitchen to put pour some coffee. Uh, the fact that that happens right after the one I read is so upsetting. Yeah, like she's aware of how mad she is, mm-hmm. and and he just beat like. Just he just demolishes her. Yeah, it's so upsetting. <laughs> I didn't ask where the cups were. I yeah, said I hated How that. I some? hated that. I hated that. Um, there on that the, the like whole reasonable tone of voice thing. Yes, so gets to me about 
mm-hmm. like online arguments now where it's like it's all, it's all part of the like fucking debate me culture right yes, of like yeah. I yeah. can say it I better than you have, can so I'm right if you're so sure like let's just have a debate I'm w- ready to debate you like facts are on my side or like super moderate um eccentrist Democrats who are like but how are we going to pay for these things? I'm the voice of reason. It's like, well, how the fuck do we pay for anything? Right. Yeah. For, uh, enormous wars that don't ever end. Or like I, this is like an argument that I used to get into with um, the my ex-boyfriend that um, attacked me. Um, but one of the things he always would say was like, like, well, you're crying like or like you're emotional right now. And like because mm-hmm. if you can have this argument and, and not get upset like there's something with like uh holding power in being like quote well articulated Mm -hmm. being um calm and detached um and also like pointing out someone else's like misspeak or typos like Mm -hmm. being like oh well you know uh that's spelled wrong and it's like okay well yeah it it, it doesn't change the fact that i'm asking you to sympathize to under to, to be understand human. someone else's experience yeah i listened to this podcast called uh the dig um put out by i think like jacobin magazine mm-hmm. but there's this episode and the title of the episode is reasonable men calming you down oh god <laughs> which is so good that's so it's good so good and the description of it is today we're addressing one of the most obnoxious corners of the identity politics debate and that is the corner occupied by right liberals who believe that any desire to change the world is a divisive symptom of a maladjusted affluenza emanating from pampered college students Moira Weigel discusses her Guardian review of The Coddling of the American Mind, which makes its case by way of pragmatic folk aphorisms like, prepare the child for the road, not the road for the child. It's like, go fuck yourself. Yeah, oh, like, like it's like a big fucking that crime so- that we try to be nicer to each other. Also, like it's the a big crime that we try who, to make the world better. Yeah, yeah, the people who think that they're being the adults in the room. Oh, right. yeah. Oh, I mean, if, if I'm not an asshole now, someone's going to be an asshole later. Yeah. Like, well, probably true, but let's be nice while yeah. we're together. I just, let's try to treat each other with compassion and respect. I love the title of that episode so much. That's awesome. Reasonable men calming, calming you, you down. down. <laughs> there, uh, speaking of things that are infuriating, there was this part in the book um, that I just found because I did a screenshot of it um, where Laura's mind her it's like in her mind as she's mm-hmm. waiting for yeah Laura's inner monologue yeah for, for um Peter. when Peter's late in picking her up and she never ever is like he ditched me yeah she, first she's like um first she's like well maybe something's wrong with the phone and then she's like oh god forbid like maybe something's happened to him uh and it's just or Peter himself no she wouldn't let herself think about that possibility Peter was all right one of the other things must have happened but which? The answer was as far away as the phone. All she had to do was dial his home number. He'd never given her his cell phone. And in Ugh. another minute, she'd know. In her mind, she could hear his voice, embarrassed and apologetic. Hey, I'm sorry. We had this family emergency. I didn't think about the time until the phone rang. And right away, I thought, crap, I was supposed to pick up Laura a couple hours ago. Can you forgive me? She could, of course. She could understand how such a thing could happen. There would be other dances. So why couldn't she just call him? Why did she continue to sit here, staring at the wall, waiting for the doorbell to ring? When by now it was obvious. Ugh. And she sits there for hours. hours. Yeah. Hours. It's like 1130 when Niles comes over. And she's and still was, sitting there. He was supposed to be there at like eight to pick her up. And she gets up and her dress is wrinkled because she's been sitting in it for so long. Yeah. Ugh. She was so excited about that dress. I know. And it looked great on her. She was looking banging in that dress. Mm-hmm. <sighs> can I, can I, uh. Bring us up for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is. Do we want to talk about mutilating boys some more? <laughs> oh, yay. yay. Piggies. Uh, this is, this is a, <laughs> this is from Madison. This is something Madison says about her relationship with, with Peter. Um, and there's another piece of just like nice low dunk writing. Um, <laughs> she says to Peter, it's not like we were going to get married or something. I've got another year of school after this one. and You'll be going off to college. We might never even see each other again. Yeah. yeah. You go, like, girl. So I'm I not about her. to fuck your dirty ass. Yeah. I know. She's like, I don't need this. This doesn't She's fucking like, matter. I'm going to be a model. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I like Madison. I like Madison a lot. Uh, certainly the MVP character. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I liked this book a lot. It was really good. Yeah. Because like, uh, apart from it, 
I would say it is definitely feminist. It is very clear that Low Dunk doesn't like thinks that the wives and mothers in this book are being t- mistreated. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it is clear that she thinks the girls are right in their opinions. And she doesn't agree with how Irene is steering them. Yes, that is true. And she she lets Anne have like her ending that is like separate from Irene's. Because I remember Irene was like, abort the baby, yeah. abort the baby. And Anne's like, I know I, I'm choosing this. This, yeah. is the, this is the thing that I want. So and like, I loved the oh my exchange God, her and her between dad. her and her dad. Yeah. That was so sad. And I, I am torn about this part. I'm glad that I'm glad that. Uh, you reminded me of this because I did want to ask you guys about it. When, so the dad knows that Anna is pregnant, yeah, mm-hmm. and is immediately. Oh, I think I highlighted this actually. I, I think this was when I was past the point of highlighting, where I was just <laughs> where the book just had me. <laughs> <laughs> you were in its uh, current. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's weird. It's not there. Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> me. Okay. So the dad, like. Anne's mom walks out of the room and and she has been asking her mom about a miscarriage that she had when Anne was three. And as soon as the mom leaves the room, the dad is like, you just need to do what you feel is right. And she's like, huh, what are you talking about? He's like, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I'm right. talking about exactly what you think I'm talking yeah. about. Right. I'm going like, to die. So I'm yeah. a little bit psychic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just he's psychics. Like, I know you. And she's like, well, mom knows me too. And he's like, she doesn't want to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> she wants to pretend that she doesn't know. Yeah. And he is just like really upfront, like, this is your decision mm-hmm. to make. And, and she, she's like, but shouldn't I ask Peter? It's, it is involves him too. And he's like, yes and no. I mean, it does involve him, but it shouldn't be up to him. Mm-hmm. And, and she's like, it's just not fair. And he, and then he's like, yeah, who said anything was fair? I'm like sick and maybe have like months or years left. Mm-hmm. And I, I am lie awake at night asking God why. And you know what he says? Nothing because I am not meant to know that. So like life isn't fair. It's not fair that girls have to deal with this and boys don't. And I thought that was great. Do you think though that her, her having the dad be there to say like, yeah, it's not fair. It, it's her being like, I wish girls would stop complaining about this. Or do you think it's just her talking it out in her head? I think the latter. Yeah, I, I think it's okay. the latter. I, I do so. too, but I'm I'm just trying to analyze anything in this book because it is such a debate. Like, is this mm-hmm. feminist? Is this not? Mm-hmm. That was the only other thing that came up where it's like, well, I don't see a problem with this conversation. So I'm going to see if you guys did. No, I didn't I, see I one. Didn't. Cool. I mean, I, I, especially because he keeps driving back to like, it's, everything here in your life is your choice. Mm -hmm. Like, and yeah, you will have, there will be life decisions that you have to share with other people. And you know, that's, that's true, but it all comes back to you. And like, everyone has their separate journeys that are like that. Um, and I don't think he's necessarily saying like, don't complain about it. Just like, yeah, this is, this is the reality. And you know, we have to deal with things we don't want to deal with sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I I, I like well, that scene a that's lot. That's how I felt about it. And I know the book is very like, and it's it's just good that this was written a good ways before yeah. what's going on now. But it is very <laughs> not all men. It is. Yeah, that's true. But that is true. Like I like yeah. Not all men do these horrible things. Not all men like yeah. Holly's or psychic one, psychic one. Tammy. Tammy. Tammy's dad is like genuinely good Anne's dad is genuinely good there are points to be made and then there are truly truly horrible men and i would say more of the men in this are horrible but it's a fair thing for those girls with how they feel about their father to be defensive of their fathers yes yeah i think yeah i think the only time the the frustration with not all men today is that yes not all men is true but if that's what you say in response Right, that that's not the conversation. That's not the conversation, yeah. 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 It's like, no, this isn't the time for you to fucking say this. If you want to be one of those men that's not all men, then be a good ally. Right. And that's the thing is, it's like, it's not men saying that in this book. Yeah, no. 
No. <laughs> it's other women in a group in regards to what they're talking about. And yeah. what they're, uh, they're whose down. office they're <laughs> yeah. about to destroy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They're exactly. about to do like a very yeah. serious, like maybe irreversible property crime involving yeah. like fecal matter. Yeah. So that it makes sense to me. So that's just like my defense of this book, even having that phrase in it, not all men, mm-hmm. <laughs> is that, well, like, A, this was before a time when that was like a thing that men were saying in response right. to, yes, all women. Yeah. Um, and they're saying it because somebody is like, your dad's a fucking chauvinist pig. And she's like, no, he's not. Not all men are. <laughs> like, right. It yeah. makes sense that like your defense of your dad would include that. Yeah, so, and I also so think, yeah, I do still think this is a feminist. But. After talking about this, I still think it for me, it's kind of it wavers a little, and I think part of that is because of exactly what uh, Low Dunk says, which is that she's like, nah, I didn't really want to come down hard on either side. So I think the waveringness is from that, but I do think a lot of it is like kind of how we interpret, like how we react to it. If we were to be like, oh my god, Irene is. A harbinger of an evil future like yeah what if what this if is what everyone... feminists do and i think this is something that uh i i relate with you on which is that i um i enjoy the show rick and morty but also the fucking fandom of that show it's embarrassing is, to be a fan of is, that show. is yeah. embarrassing and so i think like um like those people have like po- because they're fans they've like poisoned the show it's like how people thought used to like watched mad men and they were like oh i want to be like yeah wearing a suit yeah and, and like drinking yeah i want to be like fucking uh don draper uh, like don draper and it's like no no one thinks you should be like don draper yeah, that's no, not the lesson don draper he's doesn't want to be don draper show. yeah right. like so it's just it's kind of like one of the it's like that i think where it's like if you watch it and you're like oh yeah she is the villain oh poor pete poor peter yeah like then you're poisoning it yeah it's not as feminist as i would like it to be and it's certainly not intersectionally feminist oh no definitely this is a white feminist book Mm -hmm. yeah that being said i was not all right black people didn't exist in 1970 so i don't (laughs) think think she can be criticized yeah no i think it was only (laughs) only white people and everyone is straight and especially the gender that they were born yeah Yeah. every and especially in michigan i can't think of a single city in michigan where there were any black people at all yeah not a single one comes to mind like can you even think of any like a culture of black people that exist in Michigan in the seventies, in the seven sixties and seventies, I can't even think can't, of a single I, no. thing. Maybe like so, East Lansing. I don't think so. I, I think that's think mostly so. Middle Eastern people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, I, I feel like um, it is still a lot of questions in my mind, though. I'm still like like certain parts. I'm like, is that? I don't know. I will attribute the parts where I'm like. Mm to it being written in 1979 and being a sloppy sloppy (laughs) revision yeah Yeah. revival revival i I do wish i could have hate this particular broadway (laughs) revival of daughters of beef (laughs) can you imagine this as a as a musical it would would just be a series of monologues it would also be like like cats is what it's like oh god (laughs) and i feel like so many of the songs would be like oh wait was that in public domain theater that we did that a lot of those like dissonant uh, dissonant like uh songs which are like we are the feminists (laughs) we are daughters of eve (laughs) Like, there'd be a lot of those songs. I am Irene. <laughs> um, I was wrong by a man. Oh, I, I was telling you about Patrick's impression. He does such a really good impression of... Um, of Russell Crowe as... Uh, you were telling me yeah, about that. Yeah. Oh, would you, do, you it? do it? Okay. <laughs> okay. Stars! <laughs> out in the darkness! <laughs> A fugitive running, <laughs> falling from grace. Yay! Oh, so that good. was so good. Oh, so good. So, oh, good. so, so that, that would beautiful. obviously be in the revival of yes. Daughters, Daughters of Beep. Beep. Yes, 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 yes. I do wish that w- I could read the original version of this because so much of this is like hinged on the idea that this is a time warp to a different time. Mm-hmm. And if like that's just the base reality of the world of the book, like I want to know what kind of. I wish I had yeah. gotten 
a 789 copy. Yeah, me too. Well, no, well. next time. But we got, we got a P.O. box, got baby. What? Send Carved into his head. Yeah, yep. we did. Yeah, send us a send us your copy of Daughters of Eve that you read for the podcast. Let us have it. Yeah, let us have it. <laughs> and if uh, Peter doesn't have slut carved into his head, why don't you carve that into the back of the book? Yeah, and send it in. Thank yeah. you. Mark it, make it your own. Um, do we have any other thoughts about this book that we must discuss? No, I just I recommend it. Yep, as do yeah. I. I like Lois Duncan. She yeah. writes. She writes a good book. She I does. Think this is. Maybe her best one that we have covered so far. I really I like Stranger. What was Stranger? Oh, Str- I like Stranger with My Face too. Stranger with My Face like scared me as as we were reading it. That one was scary. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I I like this book a lot, mm-hmm. but I, I think Stranger f- for me was stronger. This book was not scary. Mm-mm. No, I was just super wrapped up in the story and wondering what was going to happen. Like this is one that I didn't want to put down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I liked, I zipped right through this one. Yeah. yeah. I was also, it was so, it's crazy to me that this book just like ends when it does. I was yeah. reading a, a physical copy of it. So I could tell that the book was getting smaller and I was like, well, is this just going to be over? This is just yeah. going to end. And then I was reading, it's like, you have 7% left. I'm like, okay, okay. But then it turned out some of that was an interview, interview yeah. at the end. And so it was just over. And I was like, what? Yeah. Uh-huh. I I will say um what I what we didn't see in this book was like you know remember like they never came home mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. those books that dealt with like v- intense sadness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not as not she doesn't any. really dwell on intense yeah. sadness in this one. No. Yeah. She's so multifaceted. She's except yeah. for She's the the boys and the girls how they are. Right. And anything having to do with race. She's yeah. gonna she's gonna botch that. She's just gonna <laughs> zip right over it. Right. Mhm. Um, yeah. uh, well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Patrick. Thank yeah. you for having me back, as always. always. so wonderful to cover Low Dunk with you. Yeah. yeah it feels good. Like, yeah. I, I feel like we get a lot out of the book. It yeah. feels like a legit, like, a what every book club wishes it could be. Mm-hmm. It feels mm-hmm. really nice. I feel yeah. smarter. And there is something very cool that, like, we're always discussing Low Dunk with you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and I, not, yeah. Every book I feel like informs how we read the next one. Yeah. Yes. And we have such a shared language about her like uh point of view now. Right. Plus we've been saying low dunk. Yeah. Whole, if we I brought, have we said Lois Duncan? No. We have now. <laughs> we have now. <laughs> I ruined it. Ding. Um well, do you have anything you'd like to plug, Patrick? Sure. I would like to plug my podcast, the Nintendo Cartridge Society. Uh, what that I do with Mark Mitchell, we talk about all things Nintendo. Tuesday's a news episode. Thursday's a special topic in Nintendo. Ooh. Yeah. It's a really good show. You guys should really check it out. I love that show. Thank you, Kelly. You guys are great. Um, and then, of course, same day shipping that Kelly and I do of with course. Ryan and Colin, where we talk about fictional relationships, but in like a real way. Um, we just did a, a really nasty Thanksgiving episode. I was listening to that in the car on the way here. Yeah, that is maybe the nastiest we've gotten on that show. It's because Ryan wasn't there. Yeah, it's because <laughs> it's because Ryan wasn't there. We were screaming about how like alpha men are bullshit. Yeah, we we're screaming about um, Turducken's also being bullshit. Turducken's also being bullshit in the exact same way. <laughs> it's an alpha meal. <laughs> Uh, and of course, you know, chickens uh, pegging ducks, having sex inside a, oh, yeah. a, a giant turkey balloon. Yeah, sure. So I haven't. I didn't get to show. that yet, I and I forgot we talked about that. Okay. I don't know what's dirty yet. Oh, oh, the chicken pegging the duck yeah, inside sounds, of a balloon. I mean, that sounds yeah, like I mean, a, like a, a the lovely words night. You were saying, <laughs> but okay. it doesn't sound dirty to me. Oh, and mm. so the chicken has a strap on dildo. Okay, and is having sex with the duck. All right, and his corkscrew dick. Okay, is out. They're right. inside of a balloon of a turkey. Turkey, I right? Follow. Macy's Wait, is there something day happening parade. on the top of it? Look, it's impossible to know without listening. Listen to the, Thanksgiving to the episode. episode. You don't want to give it to all the away. Episode. For There's right. also ways you can fuck a brick. Many ways. Mm-hmm. Um, is John Madden still alive? We don't know. No way to know. Um, the world may never know. <laughs> so check uh, check Patrick out on those podcasts. Where can they find you on the internet? Uh, that's just at Patrick underscore Ellers. Ellers is E H L E R S. Yay. Yay. Um, Lindsay, do you know what book we're reading next week? Um, I think I do. <gasps> what, do what do you think it is? I think it's Child's Play. Yeah. Yeah. yeah by Andrew Niederman. Um, VC the, Andrew's ghost writer. So we'll see how he does with his own shit. Because uh, with, with VC stuff, um, not great. Not great. We've read one and hated it. 
intensely hated with a it. passion like yeah intensely hated like it. never want to read another vc ghost written book although i hear you guys out there i hear you say that ruby is a good one i will read ruby because will read i've ruby. already purchased it as i have yeah. as well <laughs> so because it currently sits on our bookshelves we will read we ruby. will be getting to ruby that's yes. commitment though i don't read everything on my bookshelf oh uh, well you don't have a podcast I mean, where you read a book a week i don't either but i do intend to <laughs> Um, so thank you guys so much for listening. If uh, Thank you guys so much for uh, donating to our Patreon. Uh, those of you that donate, you get um, for $5 a month, you get mini-sodes, which uh, Lindsay and I are currently reading aloud, her uh, eighth and ninth grade novel she wrote. We are breaking it up. Every week is a new, a new section of the book. That's and very vulnerable. As, as yeah, I alluded. I'm very um, brave. I'm very Lindsay's brave. brave. I'm very hashtag brave. Mm -hmm. And as Kelly alluded to, so far the book has mostly consisted of 12 characters all introducing themselves to To each each other. other. That's perfect. That's how you know who they are. (laughs) Not a good book. (laughs) It's not good. And I'm horrified. It's so fun. And I'm horrified. And I peeked ahead. By the way, I have not read this since I wrote it. I've peeked ahead to the next bit we're going to read, and characters do continue to introduce <laughs> to each other. Yay. I don't know why we did this. So if you want to know what that's like, um, it is entertaining, and it does hurt me on a deep level. I love it. Uh, so uh, <laughs> sign up to contribute on our Patreon if you want to get access to those episodes, and if you subscribe at the $8 level, you get that plus one full-length episode a month where we cover a book outside the usual genre uh, chosen by a different listener every month. And uh, this month we'll be covering Lullaby by Chuck Palahniuk. Um, Oh, you also get a photo of Kelly with cornrows. Okay, so... this is painful to me. <laughs> you all We're have been tweeting at me. You guys are offering Something so different. much of yourselves. Yes. We give and we give. And give and give. And we just ask that you give in return. So <laughs> we already do this for free for you. So if you want to get on board with that, it's patreon.com slash teen creeps. Thank you to all of you who already um, already subscribe. And you know what? Fine. Keep tweeting at me how you feel. When you see those pictures, um, <laughs> I love every comment. I, d- I do love the people that um, are not caught up and they're like, why? <laughs> why am I, why am this I getting happening? this picture of a child? <laughs> that had not even occurred yeah. to me. I just automatically assumed everybody who <laughs> gave on Patreon would be listening week to nope. week. <laughs> there are some people that were like, I don't. <laughs> I have a picture of a small child with white girl cornrows. <laughs> <laughs> and it is mailed physically to you. I remember yes. some of you not knowing that. Yeah, it's that that's what would happen. Yeah. So oh, also, I am writing. I am now writing oh, for our eight dollar yes. uh, subscribers, uh, full plot summaries of each of the books before the episode drops. That way, you don't have to read the dang book, and instead, you get to read a really funny summary, which a lot of you have said is your new favorite thing. So, Yay, thank get you. on board with that. Uh, thank you so much to those of you who already give. Um, you can follow our show on all the social media at Teen Creeps Pod. Um, any more biz? No, I think that's it. Good, because my bladder's about to explode. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to die. Cool. Keep it creepy. Forever Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Dog. Kelly Nugent, Lindsay Katai, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, Dog. and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter.